Welcome to Snowmobile Sessions Live on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. It's the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. This episode of Snowmobile Sessions Live is brought to you by Energy Power Sports. They're Oakville's full-line BRP dealer with sales and service to all BRP models and so much more. Energy Power Sports always has the fun in store with a wide selection of clothing, parts, and accessories for all your power sports passions. Make Energy Power Sports your source for Can-Am off-road ATV and side-by-sides. Can-Am on-road Riker and Spider, including the sporty F3S. Sea-Doo watercraft and switch pontoon boats and Alumacraft fishing boats powered by Mercury Marine. Put yourself on a Manitou pontoon or a widescape stand-up snowmobile. Energy Power Sports is the home for Lynx and Ski-Doo snowmobiles for the entire family. Do you feel the energy? Energy Power Sports, 879 Cranberry Court, Oakville, Ontario, or online, energypowersports.ca. Fan photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction. This season, quit sliding sideways on the ice and losing races to your buddies. A fast track stud kit will help you with improved braking and give you the arm ripping acceleration you crave. I put over 3,000 clicks last season on my Renegade 850, and I'll tell you, these studs exceeded my expectations. Not one broken stud, my Ida wheels still look like new, and they hooked up like I was on rails in the twisties, inspiring confidence every ride. Fast Track Top Gun kits are the highest rated stud kit at 4.9 stars with over 230 reviews. The studs are heat treated stainless so they are strong and they don't rust. The kit is lighter, easier on the track and has a lifetime warranty against breaking. Each kit comes with a track specific template for complete balance with over double the scratch lines from stock templates. All listeners when purchasing a stud kit can get a free install kit, a $30 value. Visit FastTrack.co Add both products to the cart and use the coupon code SNOW at the checkout. That's F-A-S-T-T-R-A-C dot C-O. All right, and here we are with Lisa Whiteman, the 1,000 mile challenge gal. How are you today? Good, good. Pretty tired. It was a pretty busy weekend. (laughs) Yeah, you're at the Toronto Snowmobile Show. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Yeah. we wish the... uh, Wished the all the New Brunswickers off pretty early this morning, so I think everyone was was pretty pooped. We did a lot of a lot of walking around and a lot of talking, and met some pretty pretty good people, lots of good people, and it's uh, yeah. So it was very busy, very good. It was very yeah. good weekend. Yeah, very good, very rewarding. Yeah, you, really you, nice we were them. there Friday. It looked like you had a busy booth. It took a while to get up to talk to you, even so that was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I got one more. I got one more announcement I got to do before we get too deep into the show. So just bear with me here. I want to let everybody know that Energy Power Sports Open House is on now. And uh, you'll see here we got 20 to 50 percent off uh, non-current apparel and riding gear. I'll just read through some other stuff that we got going on here. I'm trying to get that a little bit larger on screen. There we go. Um So from October 23rd, that's today to the 28th, which is Saturday, this is called the big one. So there's savings throughout the store. Enjoy 20 to 50% off nine current apparel and riding gear. Livia's food truck is there on Saturday, the 28th. We've got the new 2024 models on display. Uh, There's 2024 Can-Am and Ski-Doo collection going to be shown. There's prizes, giveaways, and more. You can see the widescape on there. Jump on it and stand on it. Get some feel for it. It's $84.99 plus tax and license. It's a, it's a good deal. Here's the great part. My daughter would love to see this. Canadian Olympian Elvis Stoico and Gladys Orozco Stoico is, uh, is going to be there to meet and talk about the Kibble Project. So you can check that out on, uh, on Instagram as well, at the Kibble Project. And uh, Marlin Products will be on site with special deals. Our friends at Koala Pieces are going to be there with special deals, including a $50 credit on a new set of, of carbides. 
Uh, Scott Reinhardt Trailers, they've got deals on trailers there. You can meet Hillsburg Snow Roamers Club, and they're a very awarded club in the OFSC. You can plan your winter getaway with Snowmobile Adventure with Uncharted Society. KX94.7 is going to be their live music and prizes. If you want to know more information, just give them a call, 905-901-5500, or follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, you can see all the new updates all week long. So that's going on at Energy Power Sports this week, and I heard it was crazy in there today. So uh, it's uh, it's worth checking out anytime you can uh, get to uh, hop on in there to to chat with the folks. So there you go. What do you think of that? It's wicked. Yeah, wicked. We were when, just talking about the uh, non-current apparel. <laughs> for sure. Well, that's the thing. It's uh, it's uh, when energy does something, they do it right. I'm telling you, they uh, he he goes in full hog on this, and I mean the deals he puts on in the store. You have to go in to see it because uh, the ones we've been to in the past have just been uh, total uh, set in the bar high and uh, and awesome deals throughout and a fun time. There's always people in there. The staff is great, and uh, Olivia's food truck is amazing. So can't their beat booth, it. That was pretty busy. Anytime I walked yeah. by, their, their booth at the show was pretty busy this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, how did you get into the, uh, the, the 1000 mile challenge? What, what, what got Lisa into this thing? <laughs> uh, so they, uh, they were at the Toronto show last year. So pretty much a year ago to the day uh, it started in New Brunswick. So they, they, they tugged the, the, the sled and, uh, and came here for, from New Brunswick last year. And I just happened upon, Bobby and I walked past and I just happened upon their booth and saw 1,000 mile challenge. What's, uh, what's this about? So I Googled it right from the show and got, got a handle on what it was. It, it's uh, at the time, um, before last year, the, the first and second year, it was two guys from New Brunswick that's uh, traveled around the province to achieve a thousand actual GPS trail miles. So it was Rudy Fowler and Danny Lunn did it the first year. And the only reason it happened was because they went out one day and uh, said, you know, let's see how many miles we can get in. And it essentially accidentally hit 600. And Danny said uh, to Rudy, I bet you two guys can get a thousand miles in, in 24 hours. And it just went on a bucket list. And uh, Rudy eventually said, let's do it. Let's let's go out. And there's something about the thousand mile challenge that, you know, it's uh, it brings the good out in people and, uh, you know, gives people a, a sort of um, a, 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 a vessel to use to I just got super distracted, uh, a, a vessel to uh, to use to sort of generate some some money to help some other people because they they set out to uh, to do it. And uh, the, People in New Brunswick are super nice, super giving, and uh, just started throwing money at them to say, here, you know, I want to help you do this. Um, get around the province, get it done. And when Rudy and Danny finished, um, you know, they, they, you know, they raised about $20,000 and they knew, well, we don't need this money. What are we going to do with it? So they thought, well, let's find a, uh, a, a GoFundMe and we'll give the money to that. And the only one they could find at the time was, uh, you know, a lady that's, uh, that wanted, you know, had a whole bunch of work, work she needed, uh, vet, veterinary bills she needed paid for. So that for her like 15 year old cat. So they, they said, well, let's keep looking. During COVID, Rudy's mom was making masks and selling them for a couple of bucks. And she raised about $300 and gave it to, uh, I'm pretty positive it's Green Hill Lake. And I, I think they're in here. I'm Morgan. So if I'm wrong, Rudy might be able to correct me. Uh, Green Hill Lake camp in, uh, in New Brunswick and paid for it. I wanted one of the kids to go to camp. So they said, perfect. That's what we'll do. And got a whole bunch of, you know, really good news stories back on how many kids they, they helped that year just with this thousand mile ride. So, uh, he said, let's do it again. So the following year, him and his best friend, Sam went out, did it again. They got Christiana on board the marketing and, and media girl. And, uh, they marketed it, you know, for a couple of days and uh, ended up raising about 70 grand that year. So then he realized, well, we've really got something here. Uh, why, you know, fast forward. Now they're at the Toronto show and I went walking by and saw this and uh, just kind of forgot about it and didn't uh, didn't really do a whole lot with it. I, uh, I got home 
and just obsessed over this thousand mile ride. Cause I thought this is crazy. It's, it's a thousand miles straight. You know, I don't, I, I know at the time my longest day might've been a couple hundred K and I'm beat up sure Ontario trails. So I, I, uh, I, I knew it was going to be pretty, pretty challenging. Um, so, uh, I sent an email and said, have you guys ever had an all female team from, you know, mechanics to, to support crew to riders. And I got I had an email back. Didn't know who it was at the time. Turns out it was Christiana that said, no, we haven't Lisa. Would you like to help us pioneer that? So I, I think I kind of <laughs> left it, but didn't do a whole lot with it, but, uh, you know, I'm, I've never really shied away from challenges and I, I seem to find myself constantly being put in, uh, in, you know, male dominated arenas. I worked in the car business for a number of years and that's the, you know, it's the boys club and now I'm in recreational financing. Um, so, uh, she said, go on social media, go on, go online, go on Facebook and, you know, watch for all the announcements and for the application to open up. So I saw that there was one component of it that uh, was, it had a big social media and I was not on social media before January, nothing, not so much as a, as a profile picture. So I, I kind of counted myself out. I wasn't going to apply applications closed new year's eve and i think i sent my application at about 12 30 i went out and took a bit took about 75 videos and uh tried to make it right and then just said okay one take this is it whatever i say here goes and this video is being sent so i took it in one shot and said whatever it is what it is uh if they want me they want me if not you know i still wish them the best and i'm still going to support the, the cause so i sent it in and then it was about two weeks later they announced um the riders and it was myself and Jamie Hunt. Uh, my uh, she was on an, an 850 Renegade, and uh, the male team was uh, Miles Darrow and, and Justin Young. So the format for last year was two men and two women going opposite directions around the province of New Brunswick to achieve a thousand actual GPS trail miles. Was was the goal with but uh, but the, the the primary goal was to raise money to send kids to to uh, underprivileged kids to summer camp. So that that Very was long. it. My long story into. Uh, how I applied and got chosen or selected audit through the auditioning process. Yeah. Here's the I, thing. Uh, it's pretty neat to see that, that there's some old classics in that, in that ride. I, yeah. There was that particular year. And I, uh, I can see some, uh, uh, Corey's asked a couple of questions. I think the questions will get answered here. Corey, um, Corey Brock, he, uh, yep. has asked a couple, a couple of questions, but yeah, last year with it being audition there, they, there was no requirement on, you know, uh, sled or, uh, you know, um, size of the, the sled size of engine. It, there wasn't that really necessary. It didn't necessarily make, make or break the decision. Uh, they were really hoping for four brands. So, uh, Rudy and, and Christiana and the rest of the organizers, they were hoping for four brands. So have the big four, at least riding in it. That, that was really their only goal as for the machines that were entered in it. It, it was really just dependent on the application uh, applications that came in. So miles, uh, was a really good pick because I mean, who a 2003 mock, uh, 850, uh, 800. 800 um, yeah. It, yeah. Who, who, uh, who would have thought in a million years, a uh, sled would go around to do that and who would be crazy enough to do that? Uh, exactly. so Miles entered and you know, he was a good fit. He was really good personality, really good guy. Uh, cared a lot about sending kids to camp him and him and his girlfriend, Emily, that, you know, they cared, cared a lot and, uh, and raised a pile of money. And, uh, that's he, him and that sled made it around, uh, completely hassle free. No, not a single mechanical issue did they have. Um, and uh, Justin Young, yeah, he rode with Justin Young, and uh, he was on. Justin was on an 1100 Turbo Cat, <clears throat> had a stove pipe out the side, and I, I think there was a, a, a couple little issues there. Uh, he, I think he hit a washout and, and blew a belt. So it was about four o'clock in the morning. There's a, a video of Miles talking about how depressing it is changing a belt at four o'clock in the morning, and you know he was having to pick pieces of it out because the, yeah, the, like I said, the wash, the, he hit a washout. I think his belly pan came up, um, and, and cut the belt. Uh, so there was, there, there was no requirement there. Uh, the reason that there was only four riders I saw Corey had asked, uh, it, that that's just what the format was last year. So the first two years it was, you know, Rudy, Rudy and Danny and second was Sam and, and Dan and Rudy. Uh, and then the third year, I, I think what Rudy, the, the hope he really had was for two women, a, a female team to go out. And again, like we were, we're going opposite directions, same track, uh, same fuel stops, but we would obviously be hitting them at different times of the, of times a day right like my last stop was the guy's first stop 
uh, or mine and mine and Jeffrey's. Uh, so that was just the format they cho chose. And Rudy was really hoping two women would go out and, you know, be, be smooth operators and we'd get around the province hassle free and the guys would be, you know, blowing belts and tuning the machines and having a hard time getting around and that we would have just schooled them was kind of his, his hope. Um, so that was just the format last year. The the format this year is is a lot different. And because sending kids to camp, that's that's our the number one goal. Everything else is secondary. So it's not necessarily a a big show of you know who's gonna have the biggest sled and who can ride the fastest and who's gonna be the coolest. It's what's gonna send more kids to camp. That that is and has been and will forever be the number one goal of the Thousand Mile Challenge. Um, how can we send kids to camp? How can we keep you know and do it safely and uh, and obviously follow you know all the the rules of the New Brunswick Trail system. So this year's format changed because having uh, it, it we're inviting um, as many teams that want to come out and do it. There is a registration fee there, and there are you know there are uh, some some rider requirements. <clears throat> and uh, a thousand miles on an Elan. Oof. Um, <laughs> we'll get to the yeah. comments shortly. But it <laughs> used to correct me if I'm wrong. But when it yeah. like it's evolving, and that's the thing. It's it neat is. to see. Yeah, exactly. You're you're actually act, you're actually at the at the you're basically pioneering this event. And it used to be you had a time limit of was it 24, 24 hours? hours? Yeah, yeah. To do a thousand miles, and they've changed yeah. that now so that you you have more time. Was it yeah. because did they change it because you guys are getting a bad rap for being speed demons or are they changing it just to make it more inclusive that that anybody can go? Well, a, a little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, a little, little bit of everything. Everybody, uh, everybody wants to be able to continue riding New Brunswick trails as they are right now. So, um, you know, nobody wants to, to be responsible for, for New Brunswick trail systems, making any changes. Um, and uh, and also to open up to alleviate the the pressure of of, of you know um, trying to get it done in a certain amount of time taking the time limit taking the time limit off allows for more riders allows for uh, you know a leisurely experience through the week and you know maybe there's people that want to come out and do it and really feel good about this cause that want to raise money for it and you know join us in New Brunswick that don't want to do it in a short period of time. They want to do it over, you know, three or four days or, or a week or, you know, five days, whatever, whatever suits somebody's riding, you know, abilities and desires. Now everybody can come up and do it. So similar to, uh, to like the Valentine 500 in the States, it, it's, it's opened up a lot of opportunities for uh, a lot of people to join us and, and uh, ride, you know, some of the best trails in that Canada has to offer and uh, meet some of the, you know, best people that Canada has to offer and uh and join us in the in the goal of, of raising money to send kids to camp i love it i love it so let's step back to uh to who you are and and what your history is in snowmobile and like what does it take for you like when did you start riding and how did it get to this point where it's you stumble on this display at the show and go i'm actually gonna do this yeah maybe uh yeah so i've been riding for about 22 years I, uh, I, I wish I could romanticize my entry into snowmobiling, but I, I, I can't, you know, my, my parents didn't, didn't get a new sled every year as a family. It's, it's just not true. I didn't ride my first sled until I was 17. Uh, and I was just outside of Bracebridge. So I, I spent about 10 years in, living in Bracebridge and, uh, and just out, outside of Bracebridge, a little town called Milford Bay. And I worked on the lake and met some uh, met some people there that snowmobiled in the in the winter. So they invited me out to go, you know, ice fishing and, and sledding in the winter. And uh, my friend Chris Gallant said, uh, uh, "We'll take my sled out and try it." And he had an Indy 500. I think I sent you a picture. I found it's you not did, his. Yeah. Yeah, because unless you had a disposable camera that you wanted to zit, zit, zit and take out on the ice and the trails, no, there's no pictures. I've reached out to everybody and said, like, no, nobody has a picture, dude, like of your sled. Um, it was black, black and blue, Indy 500. Uh, it was a uh, 1991. He he just told me a couple weeks ago, and uh, his five year old son and I learned how to drive a sled for the first time that winter. And then I, uh, two years later, I bought my own, my first sled uh, that was, it was a 94 uh, XLT 600 Indy. So he was a big Polaris guy and loved Polaris. So obviously pushed me in that, in that direction. Not that I have anything against any of the other brands. That was just my, that was just my jam. Uh, so I stuck with Polaris. Um, and we did, uh, I don't know. I mean, you're, you're pretty close to Muskoka there. So 
you'd, oh, you'd yeah, be yeah. Relatively, yeah, you'd be relatively familiar when I it was all lake. So we did a lot of lake when I first started, and then uh, a lot of the guys out there had either big big pieces of property that that joined up, and then I you know there were there were, they they made we made our kind of our own trails. So we would do big days on the lake and uh, lots of ice fishing, and um, and then we you know there's a little bit of off trail private trail kind of riding. And then in my uh, early twenties, I got, got it on the trail system, the OFSC trail system. And then snowmobiling took a completely different turn for me. Um, I, uh, I think the Collingwood trail system was the first Collingwood blue mountain area with the first uh, trails that I, I rode on. And I learned pretty quickly that a 94 XLT, even though it could keep up was maybe not, didn't have the suspension that I could potentially have. So I bought a, a, a 14 Indy and that's what I did the uh, thousand miles on. It's a 14 Indy 600 SP um, 121 track pro ride chassis. So you can imagine it's good for, you know, we, as a weekend warrior, but a thousand miles and uh, I did, it has uh, its original track. And Jeffrey, my partner, was thrilled to learn that. So he was pretty nervous about that track. And uh, <laughs> as you see in the video, the guy carrying, dragging his track that blew <laughs> off his sled. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, I don't know what happened. I think that track was pretty, pretty new too. When he put it on, he, he had just bought it uh, wow. and put it on. But uh, yeah, so that my the sled had uh, original track, original skis. Um, uh, the only thing that got changed on it or upgraded was uh, uh, Seawood Marina put new front uh, shocks, Walker Evans shocks on for me, and uh, we put a new belt on. But aside from that, it was all original. And uh, I, uh, I the, the rear shock needed to be replaced. We charged it here. So you go and charged it here. And then uh, I believe Jeffrey took it to the Polaris dealership in Woodstock, Dave Sports, and they they charged it there, but it must have had a leak, so it had leaked out. So we, uh, Jeffrey, put uh, torsion rear torsion springs on for me. So I did the majority of the ride on rear torsion springs alone. Oh, that wouldn't be fun. We've done that. Yeah, and my son has done. If he comes in the chat, he uh, he did over two hundred kilometers on just on torsion springs, and it's <laughs> not fun. Yeah, so I can't. You did it, and and I heard on on the last podcast you did. You said the trails are not groomed because they did because you guys were out there. They didn't want to make it comfortable for yeah. you. Is that right? Uh, yeah, not all of them. They, I, it wasn't all of them, uh, and I. Uh, but uh, there were some that were, yeah, not intentionally not groomed. But there were some that, you know, we started. So the the rides left uh, Fredericton Ramada at five p.m. on the third on the Thursday. So we left at five o'clock and we were leaving in snow and they were calling for, for a lot of snow. So we knew that we were going to be in for quite a ride. Uh, so we rode through 12 and a half hours of like white out snow uh, on some, some leftover trails that weren't groomed before and then snowed all night long. And then Friday people went out on them and uh, again, weren't, weren't groomed and just were, you know, we, we just had a, a blizzard for 12 hours and uh and we're, yeah, they, they were pretty rough. So we, we had, I think I said to Jeffrey, uh, a couple, I don't know, a couple months ago, am I safe to say we did like probably anywhere from 700 to 800 miles of like horrendous trails? And he said, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. I don't know. They, they might, uh, they might correct me here in the comments because I, but they're driving 730. Oof, you guys must be, yeah, they'd be still be driving. I'm sure they're prob probably in Quebec somewhere now. <laughs> um, so yeah, they were, they were pretty rough when we, when we started out the trails that we were on, when we started out right before we lost, uh, the, the sled that Jeffrey started on, they were really good. And then we had a patch of, uh, of, uh, piss and alley was like wickedly good. Um, but yeah, the trails, the trails were pretty bad in a lot of yeah. places. Yeah. In a lot of places. That's crazy. Well, it's funny cause Corey and no offense on this comment, but when Corey and I met met you and we looked at your sled and stuff, we we walk away and and he goes, "Why would someone do a thousand mile challenge on on that?" <laughs> and it's like, but then you look at the guy with the mock and it's like, yeah. oh, she man, she was in com sheer comfort on that thing. Yeah, That's exactly. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. I uh, do. Do you know what though? At the time. I, uh, that sled was the cat's meow. And I mean, yeah, the, the suspension is lacking. Um, 
and you know there, there leaves a lot to be desired but that sled made it start to finish with not a single mechanical issue not like not a single mechanical issue and there I wasn't a doubt that. in my mind that it would because it, it's 600 engine and it was it's bulletproof and i said you know i got i got roasted quite a bit <clears throat> or razzed, razzed, uh, about being on a 600. And, you know, Sam, even Sam, the, the road last year said, uh, I think he said in a video, uh, how did he put it? Oh, they're, uh, oh, that poor, poor engine. Uh, I, I'm not saying they can't do it, but they're going to be, they're going to be, uh, oh, twist, twisting their neck or uh, I forget how he put it, but yeah. Yeah. Like, because what would you average? Like, did, did you know what your average speed was or what would you guess your average yeah. speed is. I think we finished our, our average speed when we finished over overall uh, was about 38 miles an hour. In order to achieve a thousand miles in 24 hours, your average speed has to be 42 miles. Um, I got you. So uh, yeah, ours uh, ours came in a little uh, a little low. We would have had to pick it yeah. up. At least I would have. Jeffrey Jeffrey O'Donnell, the the my partner for the ride, is like can absolutely fly. So he could have done it with his eyes closed. Yeah, yeah. Wow, pretty amazing. Hey, I gotta address the chat because it looks like the the old, the whole crew's in here right now. Wisco Sledhead says, "What's everyone up? Uh, up everyone? He was out. Um, he's tuned in now. All Terrain TV's back. He forgot it was on tonight." And uh, he's making some comments on his classic. Corey Brock, again, he's been in the chat, chatting up. Uncle Buck. Uh, Corey sent me a picture of Uncle Buck and Mrs. Uncle Buck from the show. Uh, I wish I was there to see him, man. Dave Miller, hey, good evening. Uh, Keith 63060, he's there. He retracted a message. It must have been bad. Uh -oh. and, uh, <laughs> Morgan I O'Donnell. Can take, I can take it. Yeah, Morgan O'Donnell's in there. He says, hi, from part of the 1,000-mile crew, Morgan, Jeffrey, yeah. Rudy, and Christine. Christi yeah, that's so that's awesome. uh, that's Jeffrey's wife is uh, is Morgan, and then obviously Jeffrey was my partner on the ride, and Christiane and Rudy, I already, yeah, they're uh... That's wicked. Dominator's in there. Hey, guys, uh, um, Nunzio, he's in the house. He says, great seeing you guys on Friday. Shoot my yep. shot. He's back. These are names Canuck Power Sports. Ryan, I seen a picture of you and Ryan together. He's yeah. a guy that likes to do yeah. big miles. Yes, in he is. Short yeah. times. Yeah, he's there coming. He's coming in March. He he committed. He told me, uh, yeah, I'll be there. Don't worry. Oh, I think he will. He loves that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jacob Masser. I'll have to get him on to talk about that. Jacob Masser at eight fifty. Hello, everybody. Uh, Bobby sixty seven GTs in there. Um, the most important Canadian celebrity. Will Gary at Mudbrats be at the Energy Open House? Odie, the sled and car guy has been AWOL for quite a while. He said he forgot it was on tonight. And how, how's everyone doing? Um, what else are we doing here? LaPointe Ski 800R says he's all registered up for lodge sessions in, in February. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Rob Overholt, we got some pictures from him coming up. I don't know whether I mentioned Massart, but of course he's in the house. And let me see if there's anyone new here. Whitetail sta Stables says, Gary likes to ride pro ride chassis. And DP Rocks, he's my son. He said he was commenting on the, the torsion spring thing. He said yeah. it's terrible. And he oh. said it was a tough break, but such is snowmobiling. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And Galitz is in the house. So he, he's doing one of these. So there's another guy that likes to go fast and big miles. So. And yeah. Chris Barber says it was nice to meet you at the show on Friday. We met a ton of people. There's uh, um, one guy said he was in the hospital. This might be Chris. I'm not sure. Can't. Sorry, I forgot the name. But guy said that he was in the hospital and he had surgery and they told him he couldn't do anything. So he laid in bed and he said he found mud brats on YouTube and he watched every one of my videos. And once he got uh, the green light, he went out and bought a snowmobile and he's been riding ever since. So. I love hearing uh, hearing stories from that, and we met William McCleary too, which is uh, is a name we've always seen, but never uh, never had a face to put to it. So very cool, very cool. That's what I like. We do a, and I'll, I'll be, I have more information on on the Sportsman's Lodge Lodge sessions, and it's neat to see everybody and hang out with them and put faces to their names, and mm -hmm. there you go. So yeah, so. And Wisco wife, Sled Chick 96 is in the house. So she's uh, she's bailing on lodge sessions. And now she's trying to lure um, Corey's wife into coming to Wisconsin in February. So 
<laughs> it'll I can't I gotta stop reading because it just keeps going on and on and on. But there you go. But you know what? Let's uh let's get into some fan photos and uh and then we can talk more about your uh your your history with this and and uh see what people are up to as well. Just gotta load up the uh the intro here for it and away we go. Fan photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. Check out FastTrack.co. All right, here we go. So, Sportsman's Lodge again, pre-booked by email. I had a ton of response on this, so I, I'm going to go through everything tomorrow to see where we're at with this thing. Um, space is limited, as usual. Uh, our Corey and I were talking today. I think we're going to sell out the, the main lodge and fill the tower. So it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. So anyway, the the main lodge had limited space for Thursday night. The the, the deal is Friday, February sixteenth, the nineteenth. It's four hundred fifty dollars Canadian plus taxes per person. Includes a home cooked dinner and breakfast daily. Um, if you want to go Thursday, you got to let me know because in the lodge is limited room for Thursday. We can get you in on Friday um, in the main lodge, but uh, we got to know who's coming in Thursday night. And it's an extra $150 per person for the, uh, the Thursday night, which is a, a really good deal. A um, lot of fun. Someone says it was a riot last year. Uh, what's it say there? Uh, get in there while space is la last. It was a riot last year. Um, and it, it truly was. So make sure you email Gary at mudbrats.com. I'm going to go through things tomorrow and see where we're at. And uh, and then uh, we'll go from there. I just wanted to get a good feel of uh of who's coming in Thursday, who's coming in Friday to Monday, and away we go. So that's that's what I know from there. So then I took some pictures at the show here, Lisa, on the weekend. And this is Corey leaning on the sled, and he's talking to Hurricane Dave about turbos for his 850. So Mass Art, you better look out there because uh, Corey's got a guy in the background there pointing at some fresh product. You know, there might be some tricks up the sleeve there. Who knows? <laughs> and here's our friend John Sherard. He's, he had a good time at the show. He was talking about Smart Shocks technology with us and showing some of his new products. And it was uh, he was uh, had a very busy booth uh, throughout the show. Uh, this is the new uh, Comp 850 Turbo R. You need to do it on this, Lisa. Yeah. This is the slide you should be on. Actually, you should be on something with smart shocks, really. That, that would be the yeah. that would be the trick. And here's our friend John Luke Lemire and his son Sebastian, and they're in the ski doo booth, uh, chatting it up with uh, fans and and customers and and fellow reps from ski doo. And John John Luke had a good time, and we walked part of the show with him uh, first thing in the in the afternoon on Friday, and uh, and then we kind of went our own ways. He was very busy. Everybody was coming up and and taking his time. Yeah, Canucks' accelerated tech is the best suspension in the biz. He knows it. And here, here we are with the friends at Koala Pieces. Uh, Corey's getting some tips on roller skis and how to go through a McDonald's drive through with them. And nice. learning all the time. And he's sporting his only Sessions, uh, Snowmobile Sessions t-shirt as well, you know. And, uh, and here's our friend Amy from DSG Outerwear. And she was giving us a presentation and trying to get Corey into that pink uh, onesie in the back there. What All do you right. think of that? That's awesome. Yeah. Those were dirt cheap too. I think they were on for like, I think they're $900 suits and they were on for like 300 bucks. And then Corey said they were even cheaper on Sunday because oh, wow. they didn't want to take any home. Yeah. Yeah. Gave, he said uh, Shannon. Yeah, was, uh, Amy's a pretty good, she's a pretty good girl. She gave, walked over a giant bag of DSG for uh, the thousand mile challenge raffle. Just super, super nice, super supportive. She's a great girl. That's awesome. Yeah, she's really good. Mm -hmm. Always great on things like that. Yeah. And then here ah, we are. That? <laughs> that was, <laughs> and that was a lot of fun. I finally got a chance to sneak in there and chat with you. And uh, and here we go. Uh, tell us a bit about Letter Dangle. The, 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 there, you see in the background, there's some clothing. And there's yeah. a, you've got your own clothing line. 
So yeah. So what's uh, what happened there is um, we uh, the group the group of friends that we ride with here. Uh, my husband's best friend, he just does this like dangle thing to us on the trail. And I don't know, it's always open for interpretation. And my interpretation is usually I know that we're chasing the tail light for the next couple of concessions safely. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to, we're going to hot dog for the next little bit. That's usually my interpretation. So when I went out to New Brunswick, these guys, nobody has a clue what I'm doing. So we uh, we were kind of doing it to Jeffrey and Morgan, and they started doing it because it's so hard to give a thumbs up when you're and I wear men's gloves, so trying to like thumb up, and so I was just dangling at them, and then we started doing it. So on the ride, there Bobby tugged our support trailer that had my backup sled, Jeffrey's backup sled, and uh, Bobby's sled in case uh, he had to go in and replace me, and. Uh, or we needed a backup sled. So there were a few times that, you know, he, we were both pretty nervous and he, I can imagine he was pretty nervous having his wife go off, you know, with, with someone that she just met in trails, she doesn't know. So I would dangle at him and, uh, to you know, and only he would know what I was doing so that I, you know, saying I was, I'm good. Like we're, we're okay. And then I think I said to Jeffrey, we rolled into Restigouche, Chalet Restigouche, um, yeah, uh, uh, Restigouche Clubhouse was first, uh, Chalet Restigouche. And uh, uh, the, this one corner, um, Jeffrey saw at the last second that we were to hang a right instead of going straight. So he kind of stopped and took the corner too wide. So when we pulled in, I said, oh, you let her dangle in that one corner a little too hard, eh? So because I stopped and let him get back on the trail and everyone heard me say it and uh, kind of the rest is history. We So we rolled into a Canada Bread Factory. I think we had 60 miles left. Um, and uh, we, there were a whole bunch of people there. And when Jeffrey and I rolled up, everybody was doing this letter dangle at me. And I thought, oh, sweet, we're late. So they've moved the finish line for us. So, no, no, I, we still have another seven miles to go. Uh, so when I came back, I thought, well, you know, the, the, the swag was a, a huge hassle for the thousand mile trying to, you know, get swag taken care of. Uh, and I already had an online platform, uh, like an online sh a store uh, platform. So I said, well, I've already got this platform. I'm going to redesign it to be clothing and I'll, I'll uh, help the, the uh, funnel the swag through it because they didn't really have, you know, anyone to run it. And it was a real, real pain. So I did that. And then I thought, well, why don't I put this, this make a logo and put it on some clothes because it kind of, um, it, it caught on and sort of, if you know, you know, and a lot of the New Brunswickers, they, they kind of know, and it became like a sort of a household a household thing and expression out there. So it, it did well. We did really well at the show. I think it's something new and different. It's kind of funny. So, but it's open to interpretation. That, that story is awesome. So you're, you're driving along, you're cruising along casually and then the, the lead rider will go like this and you just go. Uh, it's not even necessarily is that kind of the way it is. Just, uh, it just, he, he'll even get both hands into it some days with his gloves on or he'll dust, he'll dust you coming around a corner and it's just freaking hilarious. And you have to, the guy's, the guy's hilarious. So because it's a Witter thing, his name's Mike Witter. He, uh, it, it's just a thing he does and he, we get a letter dangle. And, uh, uh, so I, we, we just, it's just the thing we always say. And then when I went out to New Brunswick, it just kind of picked up. And I think there's lots of people now that say it. I, Ryan at, uh, at Chaco, uh, he, uh, he said that a little letter to angle Lisa Whiteman. So it, it just became kind of a household thing. <laughs> I love it. We're going to be doing that this year, Brock. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> you got, yeah. Ride with us, ride with us one time. You'll be doing it to each other afterwards. <laughs> That's great. Oh, I think I got the idea. That's very cool. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Overholt sent me this here. I just got to get my uh, my script up here. Yeah, bear with me here. So people send in fan photos, and uh, you send them to fanphoto at mudbrats.com. Here, I'm going to put it on the bottom of the screen. Fan here. photos are brought to you by Fast. Fan photos are brought to you by Fast Tracks. Um, that is correct, but not to, there we go. So fan photo at mudbrats.com by Monday before noon, if you can. And, uh, and then we'll feature your, your pictures on the air. And if you don't just want to see mass art and, and Wisco sledheads photos, make sure you send some in. Doesn't have to be snowmobiling this time of year. You could send in whatever you're up to working ATV, on the sleds, dirt biking, ATVing, dirt biking, you got it. 
What was that one? Installing carbides. Installing carbides, going going to McDonald's on the pavement on your on your 850 snowmobile, all that stuff. So <laughs> yeah, you can do this. So Rob says snowmobile show 2023. This is my grandson, and he's always in the garage with me. Anytime he's out there and my sled is in there, he's on it right away. Took him to the show this year and he loved it. And the mini Z or Z. He got on it, and the first time he said, Brap, brap, papa, lol. He will be two in February. So I guess it's time to get his own ride. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you gotta get you gotta start them young like this, you know. So That's holy holy cow, we've got it. <laughs> What's that? With future riders. You got it. So hey, listen, we've got a we've got a super chat here from Massart. We just got it here. I'll just um, get this going here. Hold on. I got some sound effects this, this week, guys. Boom. So the first round of uh, the lodge sessions, $9.99. He sent in 20 bucks last week. They're going to get it. Oh, my goodness. Gulitz is, Gulitz is in the house, too. He's up them. What do we got here? He's going to go into the category of mountain. <laughs> there we go. $9.99 <laughs> should get us pretty far in Canada, <laughs> Wisco says. Uncle Buck thinks that's a great pick, and I agree with him. It's pretty awesome. And then and then this is Mass Art sent in this picture, and he said something like this. Where are we here? He said, Justin's lame arse polarises. Do you reckon is that like your Polaris there up on the up on the lift? Lisa, your your original one? That's an XLT, um, I think. That's uh, it's a little hard. That was very. a little, a little newer. Yeah. Yeah. I got like four. Yeah. So he says uh, he's got he's got some copy in here. He says he's working on Justin's Polaris. Says, what else is new? He's drinking bush lattes, and the brackets are just about ready for next week reveal of the world's first dot, dot, dot. If anyone would guess, he would buy them a drink, except Wisco, he knows. I know the answer too. So if someone knows what the world first coming out next week, and there was a hint to it last week's show, make sure you post it in the chat. And if you're at Lodge Sessions, he's gonna buy you a round, uh, buy you a drink. So this is the way it works here. These are, these are the reveal for the secret that's gonna get announced next week. I can't wait to see it. You'll never figure it out. <laughs> that this goes somewhere near the skis. I'll, I'll give that as a hint. Yeah, Galit says Massar buy around for crying out loud. Everyone in Canada has internet connection issues. It's true. the The struggle is real. You got it. And this is uh, this is uh, Massar riding Justin's sled after he gave it a quick tune up. You know, <laughs> fun times and and oh, actually, sorry. So Wisco sent that in, and he says, uh, "What's he say here?" He says, "Who knew Master rode a Polaris?" Let's go back to that one. And uh, he says he's ordering two new sets of B two Stingers for his dad and brother tonight. Family doesn't let his family ride without LEDs. Happy trails, awesome. And it, there you can see on the bottom, it says one way to move as a skidoo right here. And he's getting towed. <laughs> yeah. Massart said, told Galitz he'll buy a round if there's more uh, more beef at the at the, uh, the lodge sessions. So here we go. We're into your pictures now. We're get to, we get to talk about all this and more. I love this picture. This shows you what kind of a wild gal you are. <laughs> yeah, that was my first bike. It was 250. Yeah. Right on. And what do you you say first bike? Are you on one now still? I was well, no. My we've Bobby uh he's got a 600 um ninja and uh kind of over it. I think he did his his cross rocket year, so he's gonna do a Harley now. So I said, Well, I'm not I, I'll take it now and do a few years, and then when I feel like it's I'm kind of over it, we'll sell it. So he was gonna sell it last year, and I said, No, I'll keep it, I'll ride it. <clears throat> 
Yeah, it just was too light. That bike was so light. I'd, I'd ride it to work and it was on a like a, a two lane highway, but still a highway. And uh, I would just get blown all over the place. So I didn't feel I could ride it fine, but I just didn't feel overly safe to, to take it on uh, like bigger highways because it's so light. So yeah, I don't know how other guys, yeah. I don't know how other guys do it, but it, I always got blown all over the road. Yeah, thinner tires on the little 250s though, right? Yeah. It uh, it makes a huge difference. Everything's smaller, you know. Mm -hmm. your, yeah. your wheels go around faster. They're you know I find the same with my dual sport. It's it's just it's a 200 cc two stroke, but it's just too small for highway running. Yeah, fun fun as heck in the in the in off road and in the trails. So here we yeah. go. Yeah. So that's my oldest. So that's Bobby. We're we're a split family. He uh, he's rides a skidoo and always has. So we uh, we started her young. So I think she's two and a half there. Yeah, two and a half. Right on. Okay, and what, what kind of skidoo is this one? As a it's an eight fifty E Tech. Uh, no, oh, that sweet. one was a yeah skidoo. Yeah. 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 Right on. That was a twenty twelve. Was his last one? Oh, so eight hundred. So an eight hundred in twenty twelve. Yeah, see, he's got a he's got an eighteen eight fifty E Tech. Sorry, sorry, Skidoo guys. Uh, yeah. he's got an <laughs> e and uh, he's not down here. He'd be just like scold me over the couch, back of the couch. Uh, yeah, he had an eight hundred. Rightfully so. You made that kind of mistake, man. It's uh, <laughs> that's punishable. <laughs> it's like, but, but don't ask a Skidoo guy to explain any model of Polaris correctly. Yeah, exactly. We will all get it wrong, <laughs> but that that's very cool. And is it underneath this cover? Is this new for you? Is this what you're riding in 2024? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a new, and I got yeah. the next picture here. Yep, there it is. No skis on yet. Man, that is wicked. Yeah. yeah so, so are I'm, we? Are we are, go ahead. I I heard nothing but about the XC. Oh, he's coming down here, giving me a dirty look around the corner. <laughs> Tell him I agree. I think he should. I think there, yeah. there's going to be... I thought some, I heard this. Be a, this are, this may not be... Back. He's got to... Lisa, he's got to tell you this might not be working out. You know? <laughs> it, you just can't do that to Skidoo. Get out of here. Oh, God. Good things about the XCR this weekend. Oh, for sure. You'll love it. And that's a perfect sled for what you're doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, so are I'm we going to see this? Are we going to see this wrapped all pink and the pink CNAs and the uh, definitely pink CNAs? Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I should, if it's going to be a secret, if I should let it out. I, I was on the fence because it looks like it looks so sharp with all the uh, the factory decals on it. But uh, I think I made the decision this weekend that uh, that I'll probably do the I'll probably do the same same similar wrap. I just I love the nice. look of my slide and the bright pink and he's got a sparkle. So uh, off the wall graphics in the stock, uh, Brunswick, he does, he, he does wrap. So he's got ghost wraps and uh, they, you know, you can choose them and design them and he'll, he'll ship them out all over Canada for you. And they're amazing with the, the work that they can do. Jeffrey sled looked slick this weekend. So uh, I'll probably do something very, very similar to that. with Just a, a couple little secrets that Christiane and I are working on together. Right on. Love it. Very nice. I was going to say that, that, uh, that is, Jeff should get a, a brand new 850 with smart shocks just for the mistake you made about the ski do, you know, the, you know, <laughs> yeah. de degrading the, the degrading the brand like up. that. <laughs> yeah, you can it, yeah. New, new Jeffrey uh, we definitely drives a, a Polaris. I just happened uh, to luck out and get a, a riding partner in the thousand mile challenge that rides Polaris too. So you know, it's, it's a, that was Bobby sled. He, oh, Bobby. Uh, Sorry. You're, yeah. Bobby. Yeah. Yeah, Bobby okay. should just be doing that. We can't convert every Polaris rider. Just Wisco. <laughs> just Wisco yeah. next year. He's, he's getting a skidoo. So uh, you, you included a couple maps here. Well, I mean, I took a screenshot. Yeah. Because I, uh, you said sort of send me, send me an idea of what you rode on the thousand miles. So Jeffrey and I finished with a thousand fifteen miles in 27 hours straight with an hour and 33 minutes of stop time. So works out to over 1600 kilometers. 
So that, I, I tried to get kind of as close as I could. So it's it's over sixteen hundred. Um, yeah. So this this would be like driving from here straight across the country, uh, all the way through New Brunswick until you hit water. That's crazy. Is it that straight? I mean, not on a snowmobile on really junk trails. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, you gotta, you gotta understand it's trails to appreciate it. And it's obviously, yeah. this is a highway that you've done here, uh, just to yeah. show the distance, you know, we're, we're yeah. talking, you know, from Toronto through Quebec, right through to Nova Scotia till you can't go any further and you can't, you're driving right into water. 50, yeah. 15 hours and 25 minutes. You know, that's a, that's a long time. What do you think you're going to do this year? Are you going to take it easier? Are you still going to try and run that in 24 hours? Uh, no, I think, uh, th this year, I think that's Jeffrey and I, our, our time together when we're, when I'm in New Brunswick with, with Bobby and, uh, and Morgan is going to be better, better spent, um, you know, coaching some new runners that, that may, you know, maybe it's their first time on New Brunswick trails. I would really like to revisit some of the trails that we hit on the thousand mile challenge. Um, so there's, yeah, to, to redo the whole thing and try to do it 24 hours. I think, uh, you know, we, we've sort of been there and done that and it, it's, it's quite involved to do that. So, you know, I got a lot of questions. Uh... Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I... Don't mind me. My microphone <laughs> fell down. There we go. <laughs> we, uh, we got a lot of questions about like, how do you stop for fuel? And I think somebody said it in, in the chat, how do you stop for fuel? And, or people that said, you know, I accidentally did a thousand miles in a day. It's really involved to do a thousand miles. So we left at 5 PM, the Ramada at 5 PM and had, uh, it was, it was over 10. I think we ended up with 13. 13 planned fuel stop. So it was a miles, give or take, you know, give or take. Uh, I think Jeff fuel stop sucking fumes. Um, and uh, it, it's planned fuel stops. And some of them are, you know, actual uh, stores of gas stations. A lot of them were on the side of the road. Our second fuel stop, was, our first fuel stop was in the road. And the second fuel stop was in a school parking lot. So you, it's especially on the New Brunswick trail system, it's pretty desolate. It's not like you're going through a town, you know, every, every, uh, you know, 40 miles you're, you know, in some cases we were, you know, a hundred miles of, of like you, you see your support and then you see nothing until you see your support crew again in the middle of nowhere. Um, so it's pretty involved and it takes a lot of planning to do that. And it's not that it that can't be done, but we our, our time's better spent, you know, promoting promoting new riders, um, finding you know new new sponsors, and and promoting those companies that that really want to sponsor the thousand mile challenge. So I don't see the need. We we've kind of discovered just decided that we don't really see the need to hit it again in twenty four hours. I'm gonna a three day weekend. Uh, I'm gonna do a, a long distance ride. That they're coming for to uh, set a, a new uh, women's world record. So right now it's 1,019. So I'm going to try to achieve a little more than that. Right on. I hope you can do it. That's great. <laughs> well, it's the same. Uh, it's the same same rules apply. It's to raise money to send kids to camp. So that's that's the number one goal. And uh, if everything else is secondary, so I, I don't. You don't need an ego to uh, to raise money to to send kids to camp. You can you know go out and lay down as many miles as you can and. It's uh, the, the winner in all of this really are the kids that get to go. And, you know, the, the teams, I think we would probably give uh, uh, give more accolades for the, the team that raised the most money and sent the most kids to camp as opposed to the ones, you know, bigger, biggest sled that did it the fastest. It's, you know, it's not, it's not a race. It's not at all yeah. uh, in, in a race. Um, yeah. I just saw somebody said uh, there's speed limits, yeah. no speed limits in New Brunswick. I don't think I said that. So you, you would never be able to do this in Ontario without breaking the law. Uh, there's no speed limits in New Brunswick. Okay, that's and important to point out. So you don't get yeah. people saying, oh, you're yeah. just a speed demon, you're breaking the law, and it's dangerous and blah, blah, Absolutely. blah. And that's a good yeah. point, Corey, that, that it is is like that. Um, Christiana May says, join Lisa's team in the next 1,000 Mile Challenge. So yeah. uh, on that, if someone wants to donate to your team, how do they do that? So teams will will all start opening up. Registration's just opened, and registration's closed December 1st. So everybody that registers will have a team Facebook page and on the thousandmilechallenge.ca website, 
um, you'll uh, you'll be able to go on and choose your team and uh, and and donate to them. So you can whether you're a donor and you want to you know throw twenty bucks at it, uh, or you want to come on with your business, have it promoted. The Thousand Mile Challenge is a, is a powerhouse on the East Coast, and uh, it, it you know it, it dominates on the East Coast in the in the Maritimes. So the exposure that you get is uh, is is exponential over there. It's and and we're hoping for exponential growth. So there's there's over ten thousand followers uh, or, or uh, members on the page and uh, over a million unique viewers. So it's, you know, it's something to be reckoned with. So if you have a business that wants some exposure, there's really no better way to get it and no better cause. Yeah, that's wicked. That's wicked. No, and th that's the thing and reach out and support. And uh, there is a website for a uh, thousand mile challenge. So I think it's a thousand mile challenge.ca. It's in the video yep. at the beginning that I, that I played. So um, you can either donate or join the team and, and, uh, Ride some yeah. of, as Christiana says, ride some of the world class yeah. trails yeah. of uh, New Brunswick. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. And they're, yeah. They're very, New Brunswick will, will forever be very near and dear to my heart, you know, because Ontario is so busy and bigger, better, faster, more. And I just thought this is just a way of life here. You just, that, that's what it is. It's just get used to it and the, and the stress of it until I went to New Brunswick and realized, no, there's, there's definitely, this is, there's a better way to live and they're happy and the people are just amazing. So I said all weekend, the only thing that's as good in, in New Brunswick is their, their snowmobile trails or the people. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Now, was that the first time you you've ever ridden out in New Brunswick was when you yeah. did the challenge? That's yeah. the first time I've ever been to New Brunswick. Never mind riding. Never. I have no friends, no family. I knew not a soul. The only people I knew or I was familiar with at all were these couple of people that I've, um, you know, I talked to Rudy, I think once on the phone right before and right after I was chosen. And, uh, you know, you just interact with Facebook Messenger, Christiana, you know, I, I think we started texting at one point and uh, Jeffrey, uh, him and I started talking, I think closer, cl he was chosen as the backup rider. So closer to his entry into to being my partner, him and I chatted a little bit just about, you know, expectations and how we both ride and, uh, um, and yeah, I mean, just what, what our plan, what our plan was, if he, you know, if he was to come in and, and end up riding with me, because I was originally chosen uh, to ride on the women's team with Jamie Hunt. And just as a, for some un, unforeseen circumstances, it's, uh, it wasn't good timing for, for your, Jamie. So uh, she um, very gracefully handed her, her role position over to Jeffrey and I ended up riding with Jeffrey. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, quarter million dollars has been raised so far yep. and hundreds of kids have been sent to camp. That's hundreds. pretty wild. Do you know, do you know what actually the numbers are? And we're talking, this is two years. It's only been running three. So it's, it's three years. Two, two years with two guys. And then it's one year with four riders. Um, so in total, it's 250,000, just over $250,000 in total. It was 19,000 the first year, 72 the second year and about 159 the third. And, uh, last year it was 271 kids that, uh, that we sent with, uh, some, wow. you know, we get some some very remarkable messages from people that you know thank you so thankful that their kids had this opportunity and that they got to go whether it was parents or caregivers you know and and i i said uh i said before you know like i was i was bullied and bugged and harassed like for as long as i can remember all through public school from everything from you know having horrible teeth to you know being chubby and chubby face or my dark hair or whatever it was um uh, uh you know i was bullied for years and all through my teens and i just think you know going to camp for that week the and alleviating the stress of you know maybe not such a great childhood and not too many friends maybe it would have it would have changed trajectory a little bit or given given me the opportunity or a better start or to connect with some good friends um maybe it, maybe if i had that opportunity it would have given given me a better chance so you never know the difference that it's going to make to these kids and uh you know people people have shared the stories with us so it's if you get involved and you see firsthand some of the parents and caregivers it truly shows you why this is such an important goal to us oh for sure now you have you heard stories of actually pid kids that children that have benefited from this oh absolutely yeah there's there's some on the thousand mile challenge facebook page that we asked you know to go on and uh and put some anonymous uh stories up we've all had all four riders and the organizers have all had personally people send us messages and i mean my phone got 
flooded with messages um, of, of the kids that got to go. And I, the, I sent a couple of girls from, from Ontario that you know, they all have, you know, some pretty horrific stories. So it, it's pretty nice to help and, and make the difference. And it's uh, Christiana saying here too, that, yeah, it's, it's a life changing experience for the riders too. I know. I mean, I know Jeffrey and Morgan and I, I learned from a hole in the ground and we'll, we'll be friends for life because when you go through something like that, it, that's not just a snowmobile ride. It's not just a thousand miles. You know, I was with a group of people that like, they, they saw me struggle and in pain and, you know, wanting to quit. Like they, they saw me in essentially the darkest hour, like laying on the ground and just, you know, so in shock of just how sheer, like just the sheer difficulty of it. Uh, we rolled into uh, the Rustagouche Clubhouse. It was, uh, we hit 527 miles. And just before that, we were going through hydro lines and it was dark and uh, it was snowing like a bugger out still. And uh, Jeffrey had pulled to the side of the trail. So I pulled up beside him, not really having a clue what was going on. And he took his phone out and took a picture of the GPS and said, uh, you, you, just, uh, you just rode 500 miles in 12 and a half hours as a female. Good for you, Lisa. And all I could say back was, I am so effing wrecked right now. And I was just in so much shock at how hard it was that we rolled into the, the clubhouse and he laid on the ground and then I laid down and I sat up and all I could think of was, oh my God, this is so hard. And we're only halfway. I am only halfway right now. So these people that were on my support crew, Morgan and Chris Dumas and Jeffrey, I mean, and Jeffrey having to ride and sacrifice not getting it done in 24 hours just to ride with me, um, you know, you, you never forget that. You, you'll never forget that. And you'll never forget the experience you had with somebody that was suffering so much and just watching them not quit. Um, but that, that will we'll be friends for life. So it's a very life-changing experience. It, it certainly was last year for all of us um for for sure oh that's very cool you know and and that's the thing you not that there's anything wrong with all the other charities out there but it it seems to be very heavily weighted towards you know cancer awareness and and you know that type of thing and to see something like this that directly impacts children is is amazing that you know, you know that are right in your own town that are your neighbors that yeah are you know they go to school with your kids yeah it, it's it's a really big deal um and not that we would share all the details of the, the kids that we know it, everything you know is is kept confidential with the thousand mile challenge but just knowing that every dollar was kept in our own communities and it's new brunswick and ontario and if we did receive applications from out of province it has no borders we we wouldn't turn down you know a kid that was really in need that was maybe in another province um er everything would be sort of uh would be divvied out as as fair as possible and uh, and kid no kid would be turned down yeah oh for sure that's it it's amazing so i just love it you know and whenever i do any fundraising i always try and put it for the kids so i think mm -hmm. it's a great great thing you're doing here 100 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and here's some of your summer passion here that was yeah uh, yeah that we went we went on the uh uh we did the atv the kelly shires uh, uh breast cancer ride at, at uh, the watlings in uh, yep. Halford, that was a lot of fun. That's the first time I've been ATVing on those trails. And it was, a, yeah, it was a lot of fun. That was a really good group of people. Very much like so the that became a family. Yeah, do you do the snow run as well for Kelly Shires or are you just oh, the you summer know, one? You know what's crazy about that? The Kelly Shires run I have known of for probably 13 years. And I don't think there's been one single winter that the date has worked out. I've either been away or I got really sick um, or, or uh, yeah, traveling there, there always seemed to be something that I've never been able to go. So next year I said, I don't care what's going on. I'm carving the date out and I'm absolutely going to be going because I, I work for Walker financial. So I, uh, we're at the boat show in the yeah. winter. So that particular weekend, yeah, we'll be at the boat show and I was supposed to be in Costa Rica. So I don't, but I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> that's too bad yes, but definitely next year they're really good Susie came down and saw us i seen pictures on your social with you and Susie, so it's yeah, good i i didn't hear yeah. at the show i seen a, a bunch of faces i recognized at the kelly shires booth but she must yeah. have been there when we passed through so that was pretty cool yeah yeah she's yeah. lovely yeah she's lovely she she made a point of coming down to to meet in person 
That's the letter dangle crest. <laughs> yes, love it. Love it. Yeah, now I, I think it's great. I can't wait to ride now and do the little letter dangle symbol yeah. to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to get one of those shirts from you. Now, are you taking the proceeds from the shirts or some of the money from the shirts to, to go towards yeah. your team? Is that yeah, how it so works? It's so it's a desire. A yeah. I thought it was just a really good way to sort of keep the momentum going and uh, generate a little bit of income throughout the year. So we, I got a little, little busy today because I went straight into work. So I haven't had a chance to, to sort out and do inventory and take stock of what happened. So we'll, uh, I'll be able to announce a little later what I was able to generate for, for the charity. Oh, there's Amy there. Right you missed it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Best shirts ever wearing mine right now. I love it. <laughs> they're pretty they're really uh I found I found a niche definitely with those hoodies. So they're uh I yeah, should very, patent those. <laughs> very cool. Where can where can people buy the letter dangle brand? So you can go on ledridingco.com and uh I can, I'll ship out or you can, I'll, I'll, if you're local, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm in Barrie a lot. So if, well, I guess if you're local to me, yeah. Um, yeah that's cool. Yeah, Here, I'm going to post the, post thanks. the URL up there, ledridingco.com. Is that correct? Can you see it on the screen there? Yep. Some, yep. Something like that. Yeah. Cool. And it's on the Facebook and, page. Uh, yeah. So if you go on, I, there'll be lots of updates. So if you follow the thousand mile challenge and led riding, um, and Lisa Whiteman on, uh, on Facebook, you'll get all the constant updates of the thousand mile and what's going on. And then closer to the winter, it'll get pretty exciting. That's cool. So although you didn't have any social media presence, uh, up until three years ago, you're, you're full hog into it now, correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't really know how it happened. I I'd say that the Christiana is really the mastermind behind that because she taught me everything like her, her and Rudy and uh, and uh, Jeffrey is, is uh, Jeffrey and Morgan are uh, are, are uh, wickedly good on Instagram but uh, I you know I had nothing against social media and it's not that I didn't I, I didn't have really have anything against it I guess I just uh, there was so much that I just eh, I didn't really have a need you know I don't I don't need to see you know, selfies of people you know the same selfie eight thousand times and there's a lot of nonsense and you know i always I, I had social media for a little bit oh god when facebook first first came out and i just found you know nobody really minds their own business to to begin with uh, you know without this so I, I didn't really feel a need to put my life out there and you know expose practically everything and just the, the simple fact that you <sighs> It, it just like a photo album you, you don't put all the, the bad in there and i just it really bothered me that there's so much um the, the, there's so much put on social media that doesn't give you a full glimpse into somebody's life you know so you might only get a little snippet of someone's life so you might look at a woman uh, you know a woman that had medals and all these marathons and as a busy mom or not mom or dad or whomever you might think oh well on top of all that i'm doing i should be doing what this woman's doing um and running a marathon but you don't realize she's up at four o'clock in the morning and running and working out and she does that five days a week or how much money it costs or the type of sponsors you need or how far she travels you don't see the rest you just see this this one just one snip of somebody's life. And I just feel like there's so few people that are willing to say, you know what, I, I didn't feel good today, or I was broke, or I've struggled, or, you know, I've got, I've been bullied, or, um, you know, I, I, I've chose, I, they don't want to put it all out there and say, nobody's batting a thousand. You know, we all struggle and nobody avoids it. So just because it seems like somebody is doing really well all the time and never struggles on social media does not mean that that's the case because nobody is batting a thousand nobody so yeah. that's that was kind of my my approach so that's why my approach to social media now is to try to be pretty pretty honest i don't put a lot of filtered pictures on and I, you know i just i i give it pretty honest and try to put some you know positivity or encour encouraging posts out so that people know hey <laughs> you know everything that you do i i had a lady actually message me a couple 
a couple days ago or last week, I think it was, and say, uh, you know, you, you do so many things and you're, you're doing this all the time and you're doing these snowmobile rides. I wish I could handle everything so gracefully or even half as gracefully as you. And I immediately walked out to the garage. I don't even think I responded to her yet. I sat on my sled because I was almost angry. It almost like it almost upset me that I, I think, no, I get, I get anxious. I get super depressed. I I've struggled before, you know, and I've, I've been unhappy. Nobody's batting a thousand. And I put a video up saying that, you know, to just to, just so that people know. So I try to keep it as real as I can. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, and speaking of social media and Facebook, if you're watching this live at Facebook and you're wondering where all the messages that we're answering and talking to you are coming from, Mark Bow was in Facebook and he jumped over to the YouTube channel, Mud Brats, and you can join in the live chat right there. And there's a ton of conversation going on. Uh, Lisa's seeing it going on and they're talking about anything and everything in the chat. And if you want to ask Lisa a question, you can just post it up there and we'll answer it. So um mm -hmm. christiana says lisa will always in caps be the first female who yeah. ever conquered the thousand miles non-stop and probably the last <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah it was definitely it was really something it's uh i uh yeah oh, it almost brings tears to my eyes reading it it's, it's kind of one of those things like it, a lot of guys might look at it like, well, it's just a snowmobile ride. But I, I never, I never denied or disputed the fact that it was going to be more physically daunting for me. We, you know, we're, we're just not built the same. We know it's going to be physically harder for me. You know, I'll, I heard another girl, she was on a, a podcast and I, I, I couldn't quite figure out what she does. I think it's a mountain. I think she's a mountain rider. And she said, a lot of our strength is comes from our lower body. So we might burn out our legs because we don't have the upper body strength and i didn't even occur to me until i went for a really long ride with my husband and his four or five buddies because i th there's a couple girls that have come out and started in the last few years riding but before that i didn't have any female friends that rode so i rode with a lot of guys and either you learn to keep up or you don't you don't go and we went yeah. out we got stuck and i was so gassed and my husband treats me like a dude and and doesn't have to wait for me so he didn't really give me a lot of sympathy let's go man let's just go just go stop slowing down just go and i said let to him dang. let her let, let her, her dangle, dangle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i'm like dude I'm, you understand, like I'm riding the same machines you are. It's not like this, this is a, this is a girl's machine. That's a guy's machine. I'm riding the same friggin' machines you guys are. And I, at the end of the day, I'm still a woman tugging around the same sled you are. So shut up. And it, yeah. then even he was like, you know what? I never thought of it like that because Lisa rides like a guy. So I, I never thought of it like that. So we knew, like I knew I was going to be physically tired. I, I don't think I just knew that much, but I, I, uh, I, I knew from the beginning and it, it was, it was so ironic how it worked out because the woman that holds the record, it was in, I read an article and she said in it because she was getting gassed a bit, roasted a bit about her age. She was 51 and she did it on a 99. Uh, Bobby will be down, stomping down here in a second too. Wait, just wait. I think it's a 99 or a 2001 XC, XCR, uh, 700 XC. And she said, you know, does the younger woman have a, have a better chance of finishing physically? Maybe, but is the younger woman going to continue going when her hands go numb? Um, because mine did and mine did. They eventually you're like, your hands are so seized up and so sore and just the, they just from the vibration and running a sled for 20, 20 we did 27 hours straight. Um, and, uh, are, is a younger woman going to be able to continue riding through a, a 2001? There he is. 2001. Yeah. No, he got lazy. He's in the chat now. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> and, uh, and he, uh, <laughs> oh, geez. And uh, she said, uh, is a younger woman going to continue riding through a blinding snowstorm? Because I did. And we had 12 and a half hours. So it was just so ironic how it worked out. But um, the just the sheer physicality of it and going that long, it was just so exhausting. And uh, <laughs> education. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, so uh, the, do, do I, do I hope other women want to do, will do it? I mean, absolutely. I, I, I'd fully support it. Um, and you know, and, and show, show, tell them and show them as much as I can, but there's, I knew going into it, you're only going to get so tired. So you, to have the mental grit to, 
peel yourself up and get back on. I, I mean, I don't know. Jeffrey, Jeffrey said he didn't think I was getting back on at the 500. It, it was 527, but at the five, the, the halfway point. And uh, I didn't realize how, how convinced he was. And uh, I, I know they got the backup rider to suit up and I was laying on the ground looking up at Bobby. And uh, I said, I think my, I think I broke my back or my, because I was just so delirious. I just, I think I broke my back or Bobby, you got to go in, dude, I'm done. I'm done. And he pulled me aside and, uh, and said, um, I, I told him before the ride, you have to remind me that the pain of quitting is going to be a lot worse for me for the next 10 years than the pain I'm in right now. And he just kept telling me, Lisa, there's so many women that want to see you finish this. You have to, you have to keep going, man. You got to get on that sled and go. I, I, I told him, no, dude, I'm done. I'm done. I, I can't go anymore. I'm, I just, it, I was just so, I was, it was so hard. It was so hard. And uh, he said, Lisa, Lisa, if you quit now, you, you're, you are going to be so upset for the rest of your life. Like you're going to regret it the rest of your life. You got to get back on and go. And then I walked back over to the sled and Rudy was, uh, was fueling my sled up. I think he had a t-shirt and a Davy Crockett hat on. He might've had a hoodie by then t-shirt and a Davy Crockett hat on. And, uh, I, he said, uh, Lisa, the, uh, the, uh, oh, that's what I said. The pain of quitting over the next 10 years is much worse than the pain of doing it now. Staying in it, Lisa. So I am standing at my sled beside Rudy. And, uh, I think Morgan was, was, I think Morgan and Bobby were behind me and Morgan was like, they had no idea what to do. Like here's water and your peanut butter sandwich. And I, I was sick to my stomach and she got me Pepto-Bismol and I, I, I don't even know where Jeffrey was. And I was looking at Rudy and he said, uh, Lisa, it's, it's sun's coming out here. You're going to get your second wind. And then I heard the other two sleds start up and they, they, I had just come off the trail to my right and I was pretty out of it. And I, I heard the, the moth go and then, uh, scream, it's a triple, uh, scream over to the trail. And then the turbo went and I thought, holy shit, they're here doing a thing. And all these people are sitting here right now. These two big support crews helping us do this, this thing. Holy shit. I'm, I'm here doing something right now. All right. And you're one of four too, which makes it even worse. Go. It's not like you can hide. You no, know what I mean? I didn't really care about a whole lot there at that point. I, I just, I was just like, I was so, I didn't know what I needed. I don't, I don't know if I need to sit down or stand up or lay down or eat or like, I don't know what I needed. And it was just, just like instantly, um, holy shit, we're doing, we're doing this thing right now. And I was like, okay. And I pulled my helmet back on and away we went and the sun came out and oh yeah, the, I, the second wind picked up. And I, I think that that was our fastest fuel leg That's from cool. like That's crashing cool. and burning out. And then we rolled in uh, to that. The next one was the Shelley uh, uh, Restigouche. So we left the clubhouse and went to Shelley Restigouche and it was our fastest fuel leg so fast that they thought Jeffrey had left me behind. And uh, it was, it was just him riding. And I had no Jeez. idea we were going that fast. So we rolled in and got fueled up. And I think that was, so the, the halfway point was 5.30, uh, was six o'clock in the morning, uh, five, five thirty or six yeah. was, was exactly how, I think it was six because we were 527 miles and we stopped at 500 miles. And Jeffrey said, you just did 500 miles in 12 and a half hours. So we were on point. We were on time, um, by that point. Um, That's wicked. Now, are you, are you working, like, do you have a workout regimen or was that first ride, was it coached, basically coached to your trail rider and you just went and did it or did, were you yeah. hitting the gym to kind of prepare for this? Well, no, I, I've always worked out. I, uh, I, and I, I always went to the gym before the ride, just because I thought, I don't, I, I just couldn't see how it wouldn't help. Um, I uh, started hitting my spin bike just to get like my shoulder muscles and, and get used to um, doing, doing things for long periods of time. I got on the spin bike and I was trying to do a couple hours a day couch to ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Got that yeah. Right. It was ouchy for sure. Uh, so no, I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't a couch potato before this happened. Uh, the only, the only, um, I, I wish I had a, a bit more time in before I went out there because last year, if you remember, I know we got that great big snowstorm, but the trails were still not great. And I'm in Elmville. So when we got that dumping of, I think it was in January. Yeah, there was uh, one in January. It didn't last uh, though. 
it, but, but it like shut towns down. I know Owen yeah. Sound, Hanover, uh, their like entire town were shut down. So guys were doing their Christmas shopping on their sleds. We sat and watched the radar and it skipped us every single time. They, they had towns shut down. I don't think we even need Bobby, not we. I don't think Bobby even need to shovel the front steps that we got like next yeah. to nothing. Um, December 24th, is that when it was? It was Christmas Yeah, Eve. it was. And it hit Gravenhurst oh, yeah. and everything. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Of course, if they were doing yeah. their Christmas shopping, that could have been January, dumb, dumb. Um, well, you know, men start Christmas shopping early, though. We always start oh, yeah. in January. Yeah. yeah so you, sure. could, you could have been right. You know that. that could have been. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it is. It's painful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so we had no snow. So I didn't get out until Bobby was in February, uh, February the first weekend of February, I think Bobby went out west. And so I went with our friends for a snowmobile weekend. And that was the first time I got my sled out. I think we did maybe 250 K kilometers. And, uh, and then I went out to New Brunswick and I had, I don't know, maybe another couple hundred K with, uh, with them out there and then straight into the thousand mile. But yeah. so that's why, uh, that's why I, I like, I, I say it, it takes, it definitely takes some mental grit or maybe I'm just the only crazy one. I don't know. I definitely think it would take some grit. The other guys seem to, they seem to laugh it off. They didn't, they didn't struggle nearly as much. So I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was just me, but it definitely takes some grit because uh, some grit and people around you that want to see you finish like those, yeah. that, those Rudy and Christiana and Jeffrey and Morgan and especially, especially Bobby, like they wanted to see me finish. Bobby absolutely wanted to see me finish. He did not want me to quit. And he eventually said, uh, I think he, I think he even threatened Chris Dumas <laughs> and said, uh, you don't put your suit on, you're not going in. And uh, uh, she's got to finish this. And Rudy said that each fuel stop, they were all pretty convinced that Lisa was out and Bobby would come over and grab my helmet and uh and dig deep and just you know remind me of uh, of not quitting and then we stopped at there was there was a uh a fuel stop that was just on the side of the road and i think it was i think we had five and a half hours left and beautiful and sunny out ctv atlantic news interviewed us there it's really good interview and uh um i was laying in the snow again i think i sent you that picture it's beautiful and bright yeah, yeah it's coming up yeah and, uh, i was laying in the snow and I, I think that was the stop. Bobby said, I was pretty sure that you were out too. And I was so tired and they came over and Christiana, Bobby said, uh, Christiana, uh, the lady put a post on for, for Lisa, or maybe Bobby told me first, um, uh, a lady put a post up and said, I just donated $25. Everybody go on and donate $25 for Lisa. And I think Christiana said this weekend, it was over $5,000 just from that one post because nice. the heart and soul, it was there. Like the, the heart was there. So it started out as I was kind of an underdog because I was out of province. New Brunswickers didn't really know how to take me. Is this the, a big show coming from Ontario that she's, you know, she's just here to take selfies or is she here for the cause? And then I, you know, it, as the thousand mile went on and they watched the struggle and they watched me suffering so bad, it's, uh, it brought a lot of emotion out and, uh, a lot of people that, that just really, really were with me there and struggling with me that just really wanted to see me finish. And, uh, um, so we had, had the interview, had the interview there and that's when they had told me, um, you know, Lisa, they, this woman put this post up and Bobby said, Christiana, how many, uh, how much has come in? from uh from that post and she's absolutely bawling her eyes out and she said thousands and uh i i said uh you know that's that's all you kind of need to hear when there's people that are in it for for not just finishing a ride just for for watching somebody struggle and suffer and uh and continue yeah you know, to continue going so yeah you had to dig you definitely have to dig deep and have some mental grit yeah. Well, you know what, like, and these, the, the fans that are watching this and in the chat, they're no stranger to this because we've had people on from Kane's quest and we've had the iron dog, uh, participants on the show. And it's the same thing that you're describing is the fatigue that you, you can't imagine that you'd experience oh, when you hit those big miles yeah. and, and to the point where, where like the, the, I think it was the, the Kane's quest or I don't know which weight race it was, but you're watching the taillight in front of you. You don't realize anything else going on. If there wasn't a taillight, you'd never finish. And now it's not a million years. And I, uh, not, 
I, I wouldn't have finished if I didn't have the taillight in front of me that was in front of me. So Jeffrey, Jeffrey is one of the best, best snowmobile riders, as far as I'm concerned, um, uh, in the province of New Brunswick. And, uh, he rides with, uh, trail etiquette and he truly cared of the, the fact that I was behind him. Um, but he's fast enough. He's fast enough to keep pulling me. Uh, but he's not so fast that I was ever without his headlight ever. And, uh, we to say cool. headlight, we, we, it wasn't even the headlights. We had safety lights in the back of our, our helmets, the bite harder safety lights. And, uh, there were, there were some points, absolutely. That's all I could see because I had snow dust blowing snow, but it was like accumulating snow, I, like a pile of snow. Shit didn't really get real with me with the snow until our second fuel stop. So that's, uh, we, we crossed, I was on in a, in the school parking lot and, uh, I, we crossed over and bought, uh, uh, Jeffrey's aunt was there and Rudy and Kyle and, and Christiana, I believe we're all there. And, uh, they had been there waiting for us for a little while. So I thought, well, they would have been stomping this snow down. And I look and I looked down at the parking lot and it was still over their boots. And I thought, holy shit, that's a lot of snow. And it like, it's really coming down. Um, I, you know, we're in trouble here because this doesn't look like it's going anywhere and they were calling for it. We knew it was coming, but it was a lot of snow, but that's all I could see was the safety, the safety light. So yeah, there were, that's all, that's all you can follow. So uh, he yeah. kept the pace that I could see him and he was, he was never, he was never too far. I don't ever really remember losing his tail light. Wow. Wow. Was there, is there any uh, accidents or, uh, you know, aside from the guy losing his track, um, what kind of things do you experience out there? Even wildlife, uh, um, yeah. have you got any neat stories about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, uh, so there there's moose on the New Brunswick trails. I mean, I suppose there's moose here, but I had yet to encounter. So I had no idea what to encounter when we were in our training rides there. I saw the cattle tracks, uh, and so I knew exactly what it looked like. And it just looks just like cattle tracks on the trail. So it was after, uh, it was well after midnight and it was part of the trail, part of the, the route where we were leaving our support crew. So the first stop at about 115, 116 miles, uh, we saw Bobby and, uh, with the truck and trailer and the rest of the support crew. Um, and then he was to miss us the two, two fuel stops, but he ended up missing us the next three because the, the 850 assault Jeffrey started on, he, uh, he blew a skid, lost a skid bolt and there was something, and he told me this weekend, and I can't remember again, um, something with the ignition. And, uh, so we had to swap out to his backup and he actually rode on a, um, another 600, uh, Polaris 121 track. So, the, the support crew had to miss us for three fuel stops. So we were all pretty nervous to begin with. So it was, a, it was, uh, at, it was in between a uh, serpentine uh, lodge and Rogers Lake. And, uh, we left serpentine and they said that, uh, the, the guys just, j other guys just came through here and they saw moose. So we get going and I, I'm pretty sure we were pretty, pretty well on time on schedule. And, uh, we came up to the first two set, uh, a set of moose and you can't chase moose on trails for anyone that doesn't know it. I learned very quickly because the thousand mile challenge took, uh, like the, the wildlife, the care of the wildlife, very serious. And we, you know, in no circumstance, uh, were we going to run moose off the trail just to keep up with the thousand mile, if it meant sacrificing time, that absolutely what we would have done. The welfare of the wildlife hundred percent was, was priority. So if you, if you chase a moose, they overexert themselves because they're just these big dumb animals and they're so big, they'll just have heart attacks and die. So you can't chase them on the trail. Uh, so you just give them their space. And I followed Jeffrey's plus, lead. Because, plus they can turn around and kill you. They can. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it's real. Um, yeah. Well, my biggest concern was, uh, well, it's one thing if we can see the cattle tracks because they're going the same direction as us, but what's going to happen when they, um, uh, are coming towards us and we don't have any warning. So we see the first set, uh, I guess there were three, but I didn't see one of them. And that set of moose dipped off to the trail away. They go the second set of moose, uh, we come up to, and again, I follow Jeffrey's lead and we just follow the moose. We're not, we're not pushing them. And one of them goes off the trail to the right. Now I I'm thinking, 
uh, when you separate, like if this is a mom and calf sort of situation, mom's going to be pissed off. So I'm look, I keep looking behind me because I'm thinking I'm going to get charged from behind. Cause I have no idea where this other moose moose went. Um, and, uh, and we're, we're following the, the second one that's still on the trail with us following and following. Eventually it dips off the trail to our left and we think we're good. So Jeffrey, Jeffrey goes, I go to pass the moose and it realizes the snow is too deep off the side of the trail because that's why they're on the, the trails to begin with. The, the snow is just so deep. It turns around and comes back out on the trail towards me. So I stop and back my sled up as quickly as I can on a little short track. And Jeffrey, instead of leave keep staying going or staying facing the other way he completely turned his sled around and now him and i are facing each other with this moose stuck between us and it's in the in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night so um, i'm thinking holy shit what like what and the moose was clearly not happy and clearly upset so i kept backing up and then when i was backing up my headlights would bright brighten up and it would turn and go towards jeffrey and then he same thing his headlights would would brighten up so it would turn and come towards me and then eventually i just kept backing up and backing up that it it finally skidded ran off the scared off the trail and away we went but i thought for sure well i got this is i guess this is it i'm just gonna tuck behind my sled and i i hope you don't stomp my tail light out because i'm in the middle of nowhere and i gotta get out of here now um but safely off the trail and away we went and i think there was a there was a third set i think after that i think but i didn't see them jeffrey did so I'm not 100% sure. So, but other than that, there was no, uh, there was no wildlife, just a, a really horrendous blizzard to get through. I think we saw a wolf and a coyote. I wow. remember, seeing, remember seeing one of them, but cause you're pretty desolate, right? For like, yeah. New, Brunswick, yeah. Uh, New Brunswick snowmobile trails, like they're, they're, a, it's all a lot of all crown land and it's like, it's pretty desolate. So it's, they're absolutely beautiful, but I mean, there's a lot of times there's no cell phone service. That's why we're making it a minimum of, of two riders on the thousand mile this year, because it just would not be safe for two to go out on their own because no cell phone service. And if you have a breakdown, um, you, uh, you, your, your hours, you could be hours walking back, especially in the middle of the night. Like at, at this point we were like, I don't know, two, I think two o'clock in the morning, something like that. Wow. So is it more, is, is it more remote and desolate than, than Quebec? Like Quebec has a good support group, a good support of, you know, network of hotels and gas and, and yep. things like that right on the trail is, is New Brunswick not like that? Um, I have, I, I, haven't rode in New in Quebec before. So in comparison, New Brunswick to Quebec, I, I can't say for certain there, you know, I think the, the New Brunswick, uh, I know Jeffrey, uh, he goes to Quebec to mountain ride. Uh, so they can probably correct me, but I'm going to say, yes, I, it might be a little bit more because I don't, there are some hotels on the trail systems. Um, but, uh, there's a lot of pretty remote, trails in, in New, and that's what makes them so beautiful like that's what makes the trail system so beautiful there um but uh I'm, I'm gonna say yes that it's probably a little bit more desolate than quebec but i don't know i don't again i don't know for certain i never rode in quebec so again yeah oh, I okay say. yeah yeah I, and i've never ridden new brunswick and only quebec once but from what i hear so that's pretty there's cool. a lot of shacks yeah. I, I know there's a lot of shacks in comparison to uh, ontario where i rode there's, there's a lot more snowmobile shocks. Yeah. Yeah. How many kilometers would you put on a regular, um, just a regular season joy riding as far as just recreational riding? Um, oh, it, it depends. Um, like you I were doing say, crown land originally. It's not, you're not going to be yeah. logging big miles. Right. But when you start riding no FSC area, are you doing? Yeah, I'd know, say it. so weekend. <sighs> But the trail, the snow as bad as it's been last winter, uh, barely any thousand mile challenge. And then I might've put another thousand miles on myself. It, I mean, yeah. it's not like I'm not myself outside of the thousand mile challenge. And I'd say it's probably about the same. I mean, you know what the Ontario trails are like to say that you did a, a 250 kilometer or 300 kilometer weekend in Ontario. I mean, or in a day, that's a lot if you're, you know, Halliburton where you're all a lot of bush. Right. And if the trails yeah. are junk, a hundred, a hundred kilometers can, can take you all day if the trails are absolute garbage. So it, yeah. it's hard to say, I, I, if I was in New Brunswick, um, which is certainly not, not off the table, I'd be probably put a pile more on because the infrastructure there is just, it's around snowmobile. You can go absolutely anywhere. You get your groceries, you go Tim Hortons, you can, you can go anywhere in New Brunswick on the trails. Yeah. Bobby says you you usually just do about twenty five hundred, which is yeah, a pretty normal say, season, right? That's a great season. 
Actually, yeah. it's not yeah. not to sound sexist or anything, but that's a that's a wonderful season for a female rider because most yeah. of them are at home, you know, while their husbands are out. So yeah, that's a, that's a great that's a great season for any man, let alone uh, a female as well. So yeah, do, do you and your husband ride often together uh, oh, through yeah. the season? Yeah, always. Uh, and then do do you just keep your daughter in the trailer while you do that, or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, uh, well, we have, uh, uh, the, the group that we ride with, like the, the letter dangle, that dangle witter, he's in Hanover and Bobby's parents are there. They're in Carlsruhe. So, um, if we are, if we're riding there, then we'll go there and, and leave the girls with his parents for the day. And, uh, yeah, kilometers, 2,500 kilometers, he means not miles. Yeah. Um, yep. and, uh, and then the same, if we're going to ride Muskoka trails and go, go North, if we can, then we'll go to my parents' house in, They're in Bracebridge still. And they're right across the, the, the road from a school. So we can park the truck and trailer and they live on the trail. Uh, but the Bracebridge trail systems haven't been, haven't been great because they cross a lot of lakes. So if you're, and I, I don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of water. I, uh, it's, it's every man for himself as far as I'm concerned. So I just get off the water as fast as I can. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's pretty, pretty standard. Morgan just said, uh, that there's a lot of gas in hotels right off the trails. Um, yeah, but further up North where the snow is, there tends to be less around. So that's, and that's kind of what exactly what I was thinking that when you go further North, it's, it's quite desolate. It's absolutely incredible like going through uh moose valley the trails were pretty rough for us but if those trails were beautiful and smooth and groomed oh my god they're incredible and christmas tree i didn't even know christmas tree uh 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 christmas tree uh, mountains christmas christmas mountains uh christmas yeah. mountains and christmas uh, mountains, that's i think i said i think i said in a post about uh i went through some some place with uh that with, with two feet of snow through through uh christmas village that looked like a christmas village and somebody laughed and said that was christmas mountains i think it was chris chris dumas that said that yeah Chris christmas that's cool christmas yeah. mountains chris anyway um but uh yeah so it, it that's what i thought it's a little more desolate so i would think uh quebec probably has a bit more gas stations yeah, yeah. Stops we've and had we've had riders send pictures fan photos in from from new brunswick and christmas mountains is one of the the pictures there Corey yeah. asked do you have any sponsorships like do you have a yeah. dealer you work with or or anything like that yep so for this season um we I, i'm working with a couple of quite a few different uh companies and this like personally and, and with the the thousand mile challenge um so uh uh, yeah, I've got, I'm on, on with quite a few different, different companies. Ch I think I've, I've posted quite a few pictures now, Chaco and uh, Daco belts, um, bite harder, CNA skis. I'm doing the ambassador program, ambassador program with, and yeah, my, my home dealerships is Seguin, uh, Seguin power sports. They're in, uh, they're in Seguin. So they're up North. Um, and she's taken pretty good, pretty good care of me. Yeah. She's right she's on in there. Right on. Yeah. That's good. Great, great cause though too. So I can see why. Mm -hmm. um, here, I'm just gonna fire up the uh, the the fan photo here again because oh. we've got your. <laughs> is this your first sled we're looking at here? Yep. No, that's that was one uh, that was even after my indie. So that's one that we thought the girls would be good because I said, you know, I I learned on a, I learned on an Indy 500 the same winter as a five year old. So I think she'll be fine on on that. So that was a 250. I loved that sled. Bobby was the one that wanted to sell it. I would still have is that it. A player, is that a player star? Yeah. It's 1985. Nice. I love it. <laughs> I loved it. I loved machine. it. Oh, I really wish we hadn't have sold it. But he's like, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with it? Uh, I. And now we have another skidoo, old skidoo, so 2001, I think it is, mock out there at 500. It just, it, that sled was amazing. But just, it couldn't. Got a, nice. Let's take them from a 250 star to a mock 500, shall we? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I love yeah, it. I love that sled. It's because it wouldn't get him up the uh, snowmobile, uh, the toboggan hill. It wouldn't get him up to the top. So that's why, that's why he wanted to sell yeah. it. Right, and too. and the, your your kids' arms weren't weren't long enough, so you have to yeah. put them on something that really stretch them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the same ride that the Kelly Shires uh, um, mud run mud run for Kelly uh, at the Watlings is that that was the same one. I filled. That's movie. wicked. How, how many riders go in the wind in the in the mud run? I uh, I think it was forty about forty five. They had they separated teams, so there were three different uh, rides, just depending on what you want to do. And I mean, that's a mud bike with mud tires, meant for mud, likes the mud, 
so like hill climbing, I almost, I thought I was flipping over backwards and then Bobby got off like a smart ass and said, here, I'll do it and did the same thing, exactly the same thing I did. Yeah. So, great. Oh, Amy says it's 65 participants. Oh, 65. So Thank great. you. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Unfamiliar territory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Love it. And yeah. here we go. Th uh, yeah. This is what Corey Brock's going to ride the thousand mile challenge on is the, yeah. the GT snow racer right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Or no, yeah. it'll be land towing them. Yeah. The Player Star is a great GT snow racer tow vehicle. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, you know? I liked it. So, I wish we didn't sell it. Yeah, that's cool. Well, what's going on in this photo? It looks like you're you're using the sled to tow people back up the hill to go tobogganing. Yeah. Is I think I'm looking at bottom. Yeah, Bobby and the dog are at the top of the hill. And uh I came back to get the toboggan to grab it and then drive her and uh the toboggan back up the hill. No, I don't want to walk up. Nobody's got time for that. Get the sled. No, that's right. We're, we're right <laughs> in town Barry in this picture. <laughs> Yeah, no, it really is that right? Yeah, that's great. Like a couple of hillbillies. I'm like, ah, we better we better take this back home before somebody calls township. Let's go. Yeah. Well, and when you and Bobby are up north this winter, make sure you look me up because uh, yeah, I, I'm up in Port Sydney area, so yeah, um, we're not like far from from Gravenhurst and that kind of thing. So yeah, you you yeah. ride right through my land if you uh, if you ever ride from Port uh, Gravenhurst to Huntsville. So it's uh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely good. we. That's a good We'd day. love to ride with you. Yeah, for sure. But there's the dangle. And there's there's a dang. I, yeah. See, I didn't know what that picture was. And there we go. We should have had a gift. It should have been a gif. That's uh, <laughs> that's the dangle. And that's the original thousand mile man himself. That's Rudy Fowler. Is that Rudy right yeah. on? So he did it. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, and uh, everyone thinks it's impressive what I did. He, he actually did 1,058 miles in 24 hours. So, Sweet. and he's, uh, he's an Arctic cat guy. So he was the one right on. tugging the uh, the blown track. <laughs> yeah, and I mean it's not a new sled there. either, right? It's not; th these aren't new machines that we're talking about. Yeah, no, no, exactly. And honestly, I would think that a machine with a couple thousand miles on it would be better off. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I think the, the, the yeah, the, it needs a little bit of life. Yeah. Oh, he said someone someone's asking saying we deleted the link we didn't delete a link no no yeah. link's i don't know what's going on maybe youtube's deleting it yeah we wouldn't oh, we would YouTube. never delete a link I, we've promoted that like crazy so no that's cool um yeah rudy's rudy's thinking my comments got deleted who knows um it would show me if there was any comments deleted we haven't done that unless he's on the facebook I have no control over that. Oh, maybe. But it, oh yeah, he's coming from where is he there? No, he's coming from YouTube. So I don't know. Sorry about that, Rudy. Post a link in this comment chat and I'll just put it up on the screen. And away we go. But it's already been posted too. Maybe I'm a bot. <laughs> I like that. Dangle the skis a bit and maybe the link will show up. You got it. Dangle the skis a bit. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the sign for my wrist is broken dirt biking yeah Ooh. that's right <laughs> yeah. Gross. Yeah, that's sure. uh that, yeah that's my sled before it got wrapped so the oh, uh wow. the uh yeah it was red and black and then uh bobby wrapped it all white in the center and then uh off the wall graphics pulled that all off and pulled the factory decals off and uh and wrapped it all pink for me yeah excellent no it's cool it looks it looks a lot different and better yeah, i think that was a real that was a real attention getter at the show so you must yeah. have a lot of kids oh yeah kids tons. Up. yeah you actually you actually had a sign that said please sit on me too yeah didn't oh yeah and then i yeah. and then i sat on you and then you get all mad about it so i don't know what that <laughs> one <laughs> oh, this fight. Oh, it was a, oh it was yeah. a snowmobile you wanted to oh, okay i got yeah, it I yeah yeah 
it's yeah. funny too seeing uh it's it's one thing to see kids and that get on because it's whatever they always want to get on toys but it's cool it's crazy when you see like a girl lots of girls getting on it and given like a, a, a throwing their gang signs up um because i'm like i kept saying it's so it's so strange because that's just my sled like i just i i just i just wrote it like a couple of well, last winter um so to, for other people to get on it's it, yeah it must just be the color it's, must be must be a standout color, so I'll probably stick with that same color scheme this year. Yeah, that's cool. No, it's good. It's neat. Kids love that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. So that's I found that online. I I don't know if that's, I don't know whose picture that is, but I I googled that, and that's exactly what my uh, indie my my XLT looked like. The only thing different was the windshields. I think the. I think it, somebody rolled it, somebody else rolled it and ended up Frankensteining my windshield together for me with zip ties. So I put a new windshield on it, aftermarket windshield. So it had like black and gray checkers on the bottom. We got it royal and, uh, but that's exactly what it looked like. Yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, see, that's the thing. Wisco sled heads will love that. They'll yeah. love that. There, that, that's another shot of it. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't even realize at the time that it has a passenger seat on it. So that's what the the, the Indy that I learned to ride on, the fi Indy 500, that's what it looked like. That one's a little little bit crisp, but that's pretty much identical. And again, he had a black and white checker uh, windshield on it with no no passenger seat. So it's not quite the same, but it's, yeah, it's it's too bad. Like I, I know of one picture of me holding all my, uh, holding my helmet, all my original gear with my XLT. And I, I, I even had my neighbor rip the hard drive out of my old computer to look for it. And uh, I, yeah, I have no idea where they went. And aside from that, I, I text every single guy I know and rode with out there. Do you have, do you have any pictures, even if I'm not in it, like anything? And I no, cause it was disposable cameras. No one had cell phones back then. Yeah. yeah. 20, 20 years ago. No, no. And now you've got too many pictures uh, yeah. like current, you can't, you can't go through them. Yeah. You know, people, people, uh, people ask me for photos all the time and it's like, you can't even find them, you know? What date was that? And you look it up by date, and you have a better. Uh, you have a snowmobile in pictures is easier than summer pictures because you've yeah. only got two months generally to to find the shot you're looking for, and away you go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then there's uh, there's our oldest again. I think that was the next winter, um, and uh, that's when it was wrapped. Yeah, white. He did the belly pan white. I forgot that he had the belly pan was white too. Nice. Well, it looked great with the white and the red too. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. I was a little concerned with uh, the, the job that was done because it got put on in about 800 pieces. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. That's the thing. I I've done a, I've done a player, yeah. uh, an older wrap like that just yeah. last year. And it's the same thing. It's a lot of little square triangles and yeah. trapezoids and things like that. You're, you're exactly. putting in the spot. So yeah. Cause yeah, we did exactly. a color change to match the uh, sled girls. There's a, a pink black and pink version that we did um turned out pretty good yeah yeah so that's uh that's kelsey at seagull marina and uh her husband kurt so that was when i uh went over to see her and just uh, kind of connect with her i took my sled there and she that's when uh, for her to put the new front shocks on and charge my rear charge my rear shocks and just give it sort of a once over really really good people yeah they're they're really yeah. good people there so it's going to be um uh uh seguin power sports now so they're yeah great people grassroots too her dad started it and started as a marina but they're getting away from the marine side of things now and doing just the power sports yeah it was that yeah it was pretty nice pretty pretty nice meeting everybody at the show this weekend for sure i'm just reading that oh that's cool mm-hmm mm-hmm so yeah, they do they do a good job there. I, I was pretty happy with what they they did for my sled. Oh, for sure. Yeah, cool. Is that where you bought your new sled as well? Yep, yep. So that was uh, in the video I posted on on my uh, Facebook. That it's Kelsey that's unzipping the the sled just had just come out of the crate. So they uncreated it for me. So I went up and took a video and I'm probably going to go pick it up uh, maybe this weekend or whatever day she's going to be there a little later. So this was um, a, a moment I said I would never talk about again. And, 
And here I am talking about it. My snow flap was absolutely immaculate until this stupid moment. So we were out for a training day and I was with Jamie and she had an 850 Renegade, I think 146 track. And um, I, I, we were, we were learning how to use the GPSs and the golden rule of never leaving the groom trail when you're on a 121 track. I don't know. I just thought maybe it would be a good idea to not follow that rule. So the GPS had me going straight. I don't know. And it wasn't groomed and there was one track and it was that guy there from Quebec or he was maybe Northern New Brunswick only spoke French and he had like an 800 inch track and <laughs> he had gone back doing, I don't know, we followed his tracks and it was, Oh, and Mylene, there's Mylene. Um, the moment that I got off the trail, I knew that I had made a mistake and I just thought, shit, I know I'm getting stuck. Do I stop? Cause as soon as I stop, I knew, I knew I was done. Do I stop here and be stuck or do I stop way back there? Because I knew that it was me and Jamie and the boys were, uh, behind us trying, gonna, gonna probably try to catch up. And it was Jeffrey miles and Bobby and uh rudy and danny were behind them so i sort of knew what was happening and who was behind us so i thought okay well this is it and then of course i tried to back up but and then this is this is what how i ended up and it was absolutely buried you can't even see my snow flap i was buried so that guy pulled me out dan i told jamie turned around and came back just ever so gracefully like a gazelle on her 146 track and nice. uh I said, uh, I said, take your sled to the trail and stop there because they're still coming. And she said, no, they have passed because Bobby, Jeffrey and Miles went past like the goddamn Indy 500 and they had gone. But I knew Rudy and, and Danny were coming up the rear. So I said, just get down to the trail and uh, take your sled and leave it there. They'll see it and then they'll, it'll, they'll look this way. So she's like, OK, OK. So she ran to, ran her sled down quick and like no sooner did she get down there, Danny came and then she obviously said um idiot with the 121 truck came back here in the deep snow and took us off the trail and now she's stuck so danny came back and drove it and did the did the lap of shame for me and got it unstuck but that was in all fairness though that's like the third time i've ever been buried like that and the first time was in my rookie years of sledding when i went in the deep yeah uh, and you just everybody went, gets everybody gets stuck yeah right yeah so we actually were at the show walking down the aisle and a guy came up and stopped me and said Hey, I was in your Sudbury video. That was my wife that was in the ditch that was next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, it was kind of funny to, to hear. And I said, I felt bad because I thought I was part of the problem there that I caused it. And he goes, no, no, no. Yeah. Like She went, went wide to pass here to get around you and, and ended up stoving it like deep down a bank. So my son and I helped her get it out. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. geez. It doesn't happen often because I have a 121. Like you don't, you don't do deep snow. You don't. And I have it studded. Yeah. So you just, you don't. What I think I was just, I was nervous and I don't know, trying to figure it. I don't know. So I was, hum uh, New Brunswick humbled me quick because you don't, you go off the trail and it's not just like a foot of snow. It's like eight feet of snow. So you're it, it absolutely stuck. Um, and yeah. the skis are, uh, my, my skis are pink and yeah, with white loops. So it's like Barbie pink. If you go on my Facebook, I did an install video. Um, actually it's not a video. It's about 65 pictures all spliced together because the video would have been a uh, really long cause we don't have a Jack. So no, that's right. Um, yeah. Yeah. so the, uh, my, yeah, my, so my skis, somebody asked are doing pink and white, so white loops and, uh, yeah. Mylene's in. Mylene's in there now. She's uh, follow her north. So there's. Uh, oh yeah, Lisa we had her on. She's awesome. I love yeah. her. Yeah, I watched. Uh, I watched the podcast. She's lovely. That uh, when you had her on. So um, Lisa White will be following her north this year. That's hopefully, that's cool. Yeah, hopefully, so Mylene, yeah, you're going to go up there. That's great. I, I think so. I, I, it's it, it's going to be a bit of a juggle. So uh, I'm I've just got a little bit of news about. Um, uh, when I'm going to have to work. So I'm going to have to connect with her this week, but I sent you a, I sent you a little gift, Mylene. I sent you a little something, something with uh, a woman that's a part of your snowmobile club from Hearst. Um, right on, right on. Mark Bo wants to know what, what part of New Brunswick do you ride? You mentioned Christmas mountains. Is there anything yeah. else that sticks out? Yeah. So Jeffrey lives in Heartland. So, and I'm, um, I'm practically a New Brunswicker now, so I know these things. Um, Jeffrey lives in Heartland, so we've done Heartland and Woodstock uh, quite a bit. Uh, we've gone through, we went through Plaster Rock, um, 
uh, Riley Brook, uh, Serpentine, Rogers Lake. Um, they're going to quiz me on it later. Uh, we've now now drove through obviously Fredericton because we left uh, left there. Um, Harvey uh, and uh, is uh, and Tracy where uh, where Rudy lives. We've uh, sledded from Tracy before. Um, and uh, I think I said Serpentine. So it's not. I would say this is the this is northern. It's not. It's not. Uh, they avoid the south because there's no snow. Yeah. So they avoid the south southern um, New Brunswick because. But so the the this particular ride uh, took place uh, going north. So we left yeah. Redmondton and went north. Yep. Yeah. So we went through. Uh, the Christmas Mountains, yeah, Christmas Mountains is, was just above Fredericton. So we hit Christmas Mountains on our way back uh, before before making our way back down the mountains. And Moose Valley, so we, we went through Moose Valley. Woodstock is like the hub, though, because uh, Jeffrey's right in Heartland. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, Corey had asked earlier, someone had asked earlier about GPS. Are you are you getting the yeah. 7S on your new... new uh, I did, yeah. 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 yeah, is that, you'll find that being a, a good advantage for you? Oh, I think so. I, the, the ride Polaris ride command, I don't think it gets much better than that. And the fact that you can uh, pair up with other Polaris riders. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Um, yeah. My, see them I, on the trail too. see where they are. And yeah, it's going to be, that'll be a game. Yeah. Change for me, I yeah think. But we did use, uh, we did use GPS for these rides because that was like the most important part of the ride was tracking what our mileage was. And the GPS, uh, gives you your moving average. Um, your overall average, obviously your distance and whatnot. So it was of deadly importance to have a, a, a good uh, act, uh, active GPS on the ride or else um, they uh, help me out with what? Or else uh, we- Pro we Probably be your, uh, your fundraising. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we, uh, that when, when it was funny, we, uh, we were not quite a hundred miles in it was right before our first fuel stop. Uh, when we lost the 850 assault of Jeffries, he pulled over to the side of the trail and we, we didn't have any, um, working helmet comms. So we had to kick it old school and just scream at each other over the engines. And I pulled up beside him and said, what, what's going on? And, and he said, I lost a skid bolt. So you kind of quickly do the math and, and think, oh yeah, okay. We're not driving that out of here. And then, and he said, I think I blew it up. So I said, well, will it start? And he tried and it didn't start. So we kind of looked at each other for a second. I said, well, okay, we'll grab your shit. Let's go. And he got off and he had to untether on himself with, with the GPS and keep it, keep it active. And he said, uh, should I take my toolkit? And I said, nope, let's go. <laughs> and uh, on he got, and I doubled him, doubled him out of the bush. And he had to hold the GPS and keep it active because that, like, that was the most important part. He couldn't leave that behind. <clears throat> or else we we didn't know where we were at for a ride and how fast we were going so it was it was yeah it was very important so i don't know yeah. uh, i don't know that i can if you're looking for uh for name dropping i mean that particular ride you can see in the video or, or in the pictures rather on facebook that it was a garmin that was used um because there's an yeah. actual picture of of both years the the first two years that rudy did it and then again the last year uh you can go on and see a picture of, of the mileage that everyone ended with yeah, Ru Rudy's got the best answer. He says she rides everywhere in New Brunswick. A thousand miles pretty yeah. much needs the entire no province. Problems. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't. Uh, it wasn't a loop, right? So it's not. A lot of people ask me this weekend, "Well, are you out doing a loop?" And I said, "No, we uh, we um, uh, did a, a loop of the New Brunswick trail system. So we drove pretty much all the way around New Brunswick. So we hit yeah everything and uh, to yeah to try to." I, I, it gets a little gray. I remember the first, the first bunch, it gets a little gray on where we were uh, nearing the end of the, the ride because closer, like after, after the, uh, the 24 hours, like you have to remember, we got up at eight o'clock that morning, regular, normal time, eight o'clock, eight 30, somewhere in there on Thursday morning, but we didn't ride until five o'clock. So by eight o'clock the next morning, we were up 24 hours, but still had another 12 hours of riding to do. Um, so uh it it made it pretty daunting to sort of to remember where all the fuel stops were but i know we uh i i had a challenging moment crossing the miramichi river when we went through miramichi and uh I, I was saying earlier we had the safety lights on the back of our helmets the bite harder lights so all yeah, i could I like see them. was this oh they're honestly honestly i think they should be mandatory 
And I don't know what stop it was, but I know I, I hopped off my sled and said to Rudy, those bite harder lights are absolutely amazing. The only reason that we just got through the, the nighttime were those lights. I think they should be mandatory on every helmet. And some people are like, oh no, I don't, you know, I, I'm riding, why do I care who's riding behind me? Because if you ever got stuck in a snowstorm with your wife, I'm telling you, they the, the lights come just up above the snow dust. So the snow dust yeah. is not about your shoulders. So you can see the light clear as day. So I could see the back of, of Jeffrey's head and his light. Uh, times where 90% of the time I couldn't even see his taillight. And then, uh, we had the, the mission CKX mission helmets on. So when he turned to look behind him, it turned blue for where he had his heat advisor plugged in. So I knew yeah. red, red to blue, man, he was looking for me. So we had a turn or something coming. So, uh, we got on the Miramichi river and the GPS was going a bit wonky. So he didn't know because he led every mile. I did not navigate. I did not do anything. I chased a taillight for 1015 miles. Jeffrey did all the work. He is 100% responsible for start to finish why we got through that ride. Um, so we got on the river, uh, on the river and the rivers there are massive bodies of water. And he thought, okay, well, I'm just going to follow the middle track. But then the middle track got a bit wonky with all the snow. So somebody came up behind us and he stopped, flagged them down and said, can you get us off the, the river? Can you get us to the trail? And uh, he said, yep. So we were following, following him. And I, out of nowhere, I just saw Jeffrey's helmet light just like violently bouncing. So I thought, oh shit, we're good. He hit something and then his head turned and went blue. So I knew he was looking to see like how close I am. Am I going to hit it? Am I going to hit him? What's going on? And I hit it too. And it almost bucked me right off my sled. And then my, the sled shot up like a spring and jarred my back. So that's why when I got to that one fuel stop, I was saying to Bobby, I think I broke my back. And I honest to God thought a few times it was like going numb and kind of warm. And I thought, I think I, I think I just like, I think I might've broke something in my back. Um, Jeez but uh so those lights are worth their weight in gold because there's yeah, yeah there's no way we would have been able to do it because I, I wouldn't be able to it's see a, it. yeah it's a great idea oxygen has them and we love it when you see it and uh, lje has them i gave away one last year at lodge sessions yeah. from uh from bite harder and and yeah. now you're seeing the new things like the like the delta v helmets the commander yep. helmets have yep. the light bar and and like you said you can't see taillights a lot of times in snow it's it's just the head the head you're following so it's a really good uh yeah it makes it extra safe that's for sure, for sure. I, I i also love those new trail lights that uh ski do has and lj he lje has that that have the amber and green to to let you know that if you're in a group or not it's all amber the last person is green in the in the chain so yeah it's um it's yeah. pretty cool yeah 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 i uh i, I Certainly, yeah, it certainly helped. I, I don't know. I don't know if I would have been able to do it because you, as soon as you don't see a tail light, you slow down. And the last thing that yeah. came on that ride was was me slowing down anymore. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What's your model, Lisa? And what do you say to other young women who have in, who are intimidated to do this type of thing? The uh, I I think on that on that ride, I uh, I said when we were interviewed for um, Atlantic News. Um, you just uh, do, you do really hard things. You like, we're, we were, women were built to do really hard things, you know, and I know that there's, you know, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of women that go out and they're, you know, women, rah, rah, rah. It's uh, but I mean, phys the physicality of it, a hundred percent men, men are physically stronger than us. Absolutely. But, uh, to keep your head in it and to have the mental grit, I, I truly think that men, women are are stronger. We're mentally stronger, and my you know my, as my husband would say all the time. So I uh, I I said I kind of I said during that interview, and it just stuck that like we we were built to do hard things, and uh, and and challenge yourself and go beyond your capabilities and and do things. You have no idea what what's capable for you and what's possible until you push yourself past limits that you ever you ever thought possible. So if you, you know, if you put a, a challenge or an obstacle in front of you, that's so incredibly daunting and bright uh, or bright. I'm reading half reading the comment here. And so daunting and difficult. Um, if you can surpass that, everything else just seems like puppy poop. Now this is like, it's, it's super easy when you know, well, I'm capable of this. So, um, I, I, I tell, I, I say that all the time. That's what Christiana is talking about that to, to do, we were built to do hard things. So just, you know, you can challenge yourself every single day. I love that. And, and for, for a female rider that maybe, you know, is just getting into the sport, um, mm -hmm. hasn't really 
doesn't really have much seat time. Do you have any tips on, on how to get to that, the stage mm -hmm. where, you know, you're, you're doing larger mileage in a, in a ride, not necessarily a thousand miles, but you no. know, what, do you, what, what's your word of advice to learn the ropes? Well, you, uh, you have to get out there and do it like first off. Um, and, uh, I, I always try to say like, we need to normalize beginner riders because I've rode with lots of girls that come out and, you know, they're pretty uncomfortable because they can't keep up or they see me riding, at, you know, I've got 20 years experience uh, of trail riding and uh, I can maybe ride a little faster than them. And it's discouraging, but I, I tell them all, everybody know your limit, ride within it because uh, safety and, and capabilities is hundred percent the rider's uh, fault and responsibility when you're snowmobiling. Other things don't really, don't really affect snowmobiling. It's, it's hundred percent you. Um, so know your limit, ride within it. If you need to ride the back of the pack, ride the back of the pack. And I have more respect for the riders that know their beginners that, you know, they ride the back of the pack, they ride in their capability. Um, and they ride safely and to their limits and not outside their limits where we're digging them out or pulling them out or they're crashing the sled or, you know, they're, they're rolling the sled or driving off the trail. There's, there's no, there's no, there's nothing to be uh, ashamed of or embarrassed about getting to know the machine. Um, and you just, you just have to get seat time. You just have to keep trying and keep going and the ability will come, especially if it's, uh, if you find the passion at, for, you know, for the throttle therapy, like the rest of us do, um, you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll get there. Um, and I, you know, and other, other male riders I've, I've rode with, I've said like, you uh, exactly. You, got, you have to start somewhere. And the guys that you ride with, anybody that makes fun of someone that's riding the back of the pack, you're truly the idiot there. Like you, nobody rides a sled, an ATV, a motorcycle their first time. Like they've been riding for 20 years. So pretty much shut up let a beginner rider be a beginner rider, especially if it's somebody younger or somebody female, because the future of power sports depends on it. You know, there's a place for, there's certainly a place for women in snowmobiling. Um, and if, you know, we, we allow them the space to learn and be beginners, then there'd be more of us in the sport. It doesn't, it, you know, it's, I think I saw, I saw another group of girls put a post up that says power sports are, uh, is, uh, is hard enough. Um, let's, you know, let, let's, uh, be heavy on the women, women supporting other women. Um, and you know, in saying that the only, the one thing I, I have noticed that I, I wish I didn't see as often as I do is the, uh, the women supporting other women in the sport, unless you're a woman supporting other women in the sport, oh, well, then I don't want to support you. And, and I've put posts up to say, just because we're doing the same thing doesn't, doesn't mean we're like automatically competition. Everybody's got their own niche. You know, if you're a snow cross rider or if you're an oval racer or, you know, you're, you, you're, you know, the first woman to do a thousand miles doesn't, we don't, doesn't uh, mean that we're, we're all in competition, right? We're all in the same space, just trying to make up, you know, normalize other women riding, but yeah, you have to start somewhere, get out and just keep trying it. Um, drive the sled, you know, drive a sled that you're comfortable with, whether it's, you know, 600 or, an, yeah. you know, 850, definitely drive the sled that you're, you're comfortable with. You don't have to go bigger, bigger and better. We rode with a girl that kept crashing the sled and her boyfriend put her on. Uh, I don't know what it was. I want to say it was a, it was a four strokes, but uh, I want to say it was a 1000 or 1100. I don't know. Bobby will remember. I don't, didn't really pay that much attention. And this chick had to have been 93 pounds soaking wet. And I, like I said, why is he putting her on that great big ass heavy machine? Like, why doesn't he just go and get her a 550 adventure or like a 600 indie, like some, something that's, you know, maybe a little easier to, to ride and go Cause she kept getting stuck in ditches. Like it's 400, it's a four stroke. It's heavy. It's going to be harder to ride. At least that's my opinion, but yeah, we yeah. need more yeah. for sure. Yeah, for sure. We find that like last year we had three women in our lodge sessions ride and, and they okay. rocked it, absolutely rocked it. And yeah. I'd like to see more. I'd like to see that grow and, and away we yeah. go. My wife's learning the ropes. She's getting back into Good. the sport and, and yeah. uh, it makes a difference to have the right machine as well. It definitely makes a difference. Absolutely. And, uh, and studying it, I, I think definitely stud, I believe in studying your sled. Um, and uh for like for for safety but um it just it everything comes with practice everything everything comes with time i did not 
ride a sled very well my first few years, especially that heavy XLT. I would get stuck and I, you know, powder intimidated me a little bit and I wasn't that fast. I, I still, I, I had that sled for 10 years. I don't, I don't think in my 10th year of riding it, I could even, I could start it from cold half choke and yeah. full choke and quarter choke and turn the choke. And now you flooded it and choke, 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 choke. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, Oh, it's, it was an 1100. Yeah. So it was an 1100 four stroke. The boyfriend put her on 110 pounds, soaking wet idiot. Like go, go wow. and get her. If I get her a 550 adventure. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not an 1100 turbo. Like there's Justin Young. It, the concern about him doing the thousand mile on that big machine is it's a lot of machine to push around. And he's a, you know, 260 pound, 27 year old boy or 26 year old, whatever. Oh, I can, I think I said something wrong. I can hear some angry footsteps coming down. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that, that is, yeah, that's, that's my opinion, but no, I couldn't ride. I couldn't ride very well my first few years, but I just know, I just knew I love this. And I think because I got into something uh, after so many years of being bugged and bullied, um, relentlessly, even my own brother, um, uh, relentlessly bullied. I found something that I really liked. And then eventually I found something that I could do well enough that even the guys I was riding with couldn't say anything about. Um, so I, I really liked that, that I, I kind of found my ability or, you know, my a passion. So even now when we go out, I'll, uh, you know, no, everyone kind of knows, oh, Bobby brought his wife or we, now we're going to be sitting here waiting for her all day long. So I'll usually go out and hot dog so that they shut the F up and then nobody bugs me for the rest of the day. Cause yeah, usually, yeah. usually there's a few of his buddies behind me until I went Very to New Brunswick. You go to New Brunswick and New Brunswick has a way of humbling you because Bobby and I went out there as not, we didn't go out with a chip on our shoulder, but we went out there as experienced riders and not, you know, mid, mid to, to front of our groups for, for ability and speed. And both of us went out there and were immediately schooled, which I figured was going to happen. I rode with a couple, uh, not a couple. I think it was only one. I wrote, I only rode with Jamie. It was the only female. She dusted me. And, uh, yeah. And the same with Bobby. Bobby was getting dusted by sixty-year-old men, like dusted. They well, are I, and, I, and if you if you ever go into anything, expect thinking you're the greatest and exactly. expecting yeah. that to be the best, not not expecting to learn something. That's where it becomes dangerous. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. So to yeah. say that we were to say we were humbled uh, insinuates that we went out there with a chip on our shoulder, which we did not. We didn't know what to expect. We had we had no clue of the New Brunswick systems. Uh, we just were. Um, immediately surprised Morgan, uh, Jeffrey's, uh, wife, uh, same thing. She can rip. She says she doesn't like doing long days, but, uh, go to go out for a few hours with her. Um, yeah, she can rip and catwalk and they, uh, it's a different, yeah, totally different out there. Rudy's an absolute, and a savage. He's a savage. <laughs> love it. I love it. How do people follow you on Instagram or and Facebook? If you want to shout out or, or even put in the chat, your, your uh, socials and I'll just post them on the, on the screen. Uh, yeah. Uh, everybody and put that supporter link up as well, because uh, I want to make yeah. sure that gets, uh, that gets shown. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think um, I, I'm not logged in here, so I can't get the chats in, but I'm, I'm pretty, excuse me, you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah Morgan, I think it was a mistype on that one. Oh, did she say something? Oh, okay. Yeah, she took uh, it down. She actually deleted oh, did it. She? <laughs> uh, she, uh, yeah. She, um, she, I think uh, Christiana will probably throw them in here because I can't get logged into to YouTube, but uh, I'm pretty easy. Oh, to find okay. On, uh, I'm pretty easy to find on Facebook. Lisa, uh, Lisa Whiteman. Um, Instagram is uh, lwhiteman22. Um, but, uh, you can, yeah, and you can pretty much find absolutely everything you need to find, um, from, uh, from there. And, uh, yeah, uh, is I think that, and, and they're connected too. So you can get from, to, to, from one to the other. Um, yeah. so yeah, you can go on and follow. And, you know, like I said earlier, I try to, I try to keep, you know, pretty, pretty positive, pretty motivating things. And I post that lots of, uh, um, lots of, uh, a thousand mile content. So you, you know, you can follow that. So follow me on Facebook to, to see all the upcoming events and what's happening with uh, world record and all the, all the sponsors and 
ripping with Ben's wife, Ben's for the photo. Yeah. So we drove to Ben Cummings. He took a wicked, made a wicked video for us and we did some pictures and uh, yeah, and she, yeah, she can, she definitely can move. Um, and the thousand mile challenge.ca. Thank you. Is the, is the uh, Facebook. So registrations are open now, so you can go on and register your team. So definitely we should have a, a mud brat snowmobile session team. So by the sounds of it, you yeah. guys, you guys can, uh, <laughs> can rip a sled. So we, we should definitely come out and put a team in and get, you know, if you've never sled, gone sledding in New Brunswick, um, LED riding co is on Facebook as well. So you can go on and follow and get some, get some letter dangle gear. If you, if you, if you get it, if, if it's your thing and you can dangle on a sled, um, and the same with Instagram. Yep. And there's lots of, uh, yeah, yeah for sure. Part. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty excited to to be part. So Chaco, the the uh, funny story about that. Chaco was the very first uh, snowmobile gear I ever wore when I was 19. So I lived in Bracebridge, and there are very few places. Not that I had a whole lot of money to to buy stuff back then. So my first first suit was uh, about I think twenty dollar boots from winter boots from Zellers, and I wore my boyfriend at the time his dad's Carhartts and my grade eight winter elective downhill skiing jacket from Mark's work warehouse and a borrowed helmet and just like whatever, you know, 99 cent gloves I could find. So I, uh, uh, that I, then I went into Mark's and got my, my first suit, Chaco suit, Chaco gloves and hat. And I still have the whole, the whole suit jacket, gloves, balaclava. Um, you know what we got to do is we got to get Chaco to get, to give you a set of gloves. Yeah, and then get get Len from LJE to put some pink lights on each finger for the dangle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got them. To, he can figure it out too. He will figure that out. Yeah, I should. Um, yeah, I uh, I put Whiteman on the back of my mono, so I have a Chaco mono coming, and uh, I I got Whiteman put on put on the back, but apparently I should have put letter dangle, or maybe we can work on that. I'll get Ryan to work on that. Put letter dangle underneath. Probably would be a, a pretty good ad. <laughs> so, but yeah, I still have I still have the whole yeah whole suit because it was affordable and it was in the town and it, it was what was there at the time. So, Chaco was a powerhouse back then. So, I'm really hoping that we can you know pioneer some of these nice suits and um, get put you know put Chaco on the map for for the, all their suits and the the comfort. I had a suit on at the show and I was I was pretty surprised at the comfort of it. So, because I'm pretty particular with with what I wear. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, they, I heard it's uh, really good stuff. Mm -hmm. but, um, I we're, we uh, I want to thank you for your time tonight. Uh, what a great show, and all the best wishes in the fundraising and the ride. Uh, I know it's two two big challenges, and uh, away we go. Uh, Bobby yeah. says, "I thought I was your first boyfriend ever." <laughs> yeah, honey. You were. Yeah, you were. Yeah, and that's my, my my biggest cheerleader. I, d I definitely don't thank that guy enough. All the carrying and the uh, or late nights and the. But I mean, he's got a we got a whole new family in New Brunswick now. So, yeah. Uh, do, do you do your own wrenching on your sled, or is it a combination of you and Bobby? Like I know a, I know you had done a thing where you installed your own skis. Do you do no. much more than that? I can do ski the, the basics to say I can rebuild a, a whole machine would be an absolute lie. I can do the basics, install carbides and my skis and plugs. I mean, at one point in time, the guys from Melford Bay taught me a lot about my XLT. So I could certainly do a lot to it. And, uh, uh, but I mean, with, you know, the advent of all these electronics now to say, I could do a lot to my, the new sleds, not really, I could get myself off a trail. I could, I could change a belt as long as I knew how to adjust the clutch well enough. Um, and uh, change plugs, uh, yeah. yeah. Car, car, install carbides. Um, but getting getting into bigger things like taking skids out and that, no, I, I I don't know. I would trust myself to do something like that. I'm not sure I would trust myself to know exactly where to adjust the the clutch um, on the like on my XCR. I don't, yeah. And with the electronics on it, I probably wouldn't wouldn't trust myself to do a whole lot. Um, yeah. yeah, I can do I can do a little bit. Oh yeah, for sure. No, that's good. And you're always learning, which is really nice, right? Yeah. You kind of have to, yeah, you kind of have to Jeff Jeffrey does. He's always out there working on something. So, I mean, he taught, taught us a lot this winter. Um, I learned quite a bit from him. Yeah. Excellent. The XLT will show you how to do plugs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess he's insinuating that they foul a lot of plugs. Yeah. It was only one winter. It did that. Jeez. It was only one. Yeah. Two. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't usually didn't get too far with it, replacing one. Matter of fact, I used to keep my plug, the plug wrench in my jacket. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
No, that's great. Yeah, good. thanks a lot, everybody, for the kind words, and uh, and hope you all have a good night. We got another banger next week. Uh, the three old guys trip to Alaska Monday oh, awesome. at seven p.m. Oh yeah, that's going to be a fun night. And uh, yeah, great. for sure. But definitely keep me posted on how your fundraising goes. We will. And, uh, yeah. and even if you want to hop on before the ride or after the ride, I'd love to get an update uh, for from sure, you. Yeah. And, uh, and that would yeah. be fun to have you on after the ride and, and talk yeah, about the, sure. uh, you know, the, the tra trials and tribulations and yeah. away we you go. But have, yeah, uh, Rudy or have, uh, maybe we can plan another night that you get Rudy and Jeffrey on and I'll, and, or yeah. and I will come back on and pop on. Cause you'll, uh, yeah, you'll really get a kick out of Rudy. Yeah, He's the more the merrier for sure. I love that. Yeah, so, yeah. so I'll talk yeah, to those definitely. two. I know we had chatted about that. I'll talk to those two and see. Jeffrey likes to stay out of the stay out of the spotlight, so he gets pretty he gets pretty bashful. So he wants to be out of the spotlight. So I can't promise you'll see Jeffrey, but I can. I, yeah, I, I'm going to talk to Rudy, and he, you'll, you'll probably be able to to see Rudy. That's cool. That's cool. And then have Bobby look me up, and we'll go. You and me and him will go ride, and we'll show you yeah, what skidoo sure. can really do. Oh, yeah. I'll use someone. There's always that one screw guy roasting in the comments section. Always. <laughs> we got it. So I'm going to, I'm going to run our credits. If you want to hang out afterwards and chat, that'd be great. But sure, uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you again for your time. I really appreciate yeah, thanks it. Thanks a lot. And, uh, thanks everyone for and, tuning in, especially with the, we're from the East coast because they're an hour ahead of us. So yeah, they're an hour or two later. They said uh, they're yeah, right. but they are uh, ahead of us. Yeah. So yeah, 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 so they're... yeah, for sure. And thanks everybody. That was a great show. Good chat. Lots of good conversations going, and and away we go. Thanks, Gary. It's a journey for